Someone make a motion? I make a motion we approve the minute, minutes on uh, 26 September. Okay. I second. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to change, Myth? You happy the way they are? <coughs> I like their name. If there isn't anything to be changed, take a vote on it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No one opposed? Guess we're done with that one. And you guys have looked at the warrants already? Yeah. And signed them? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to do those now and get that out of I make a motion to approve that. Uh, I don't know if we interested dates or all the, the warrants. warrants. The warrants for the month of October. Okay, month of October. Yep. Second. Second. Anyone opposed? No? Let's get that. I don't know. Sounds like Tommy might have appeared or Dave as well. I heard Tommy. That's like Tommy. There he is. Hey, Tom. Give me Don. Okay. Guess we got enough here. I guess we might as well progress with the libraries. The meeting or what's I'm not sure exactly what we were looking for. Do you remember? <laughs> it seems like it's been a while. We were on, we were off, we were on. <laughs> yeah, I think we just wanted to talk. I think Dave, Dave was mostly who's got the birthday party, but I think it was just the invitation was made for any kind of dialogue or, you know, maybe status, what's going on, and feedback from the board or any kind of conversation. So. I think it was some, I guess you've talked previously about long-term planning, you know, financial planning and stuff. I think that was part of the discussion, if I remember. Great. Well, I'm, I'm Sarah Ash, I'm the director, the new director. Well, it doesn't feel that new anymore. It's been close to a year from starting to say last year. So that's been really great. So I can kind of just share a little bit about what's been going on just to get the conversation started. Um, that's okay with the trustees. Um, great, Sarah. Yeah. Um, I just, it's been a really great year. I mean, bouncing back from COVID and all of that, <clears throat> just a great start. Um, it's just remarkable to me how relevant this place is to the community and how much use it gets. Um, it's just really, really remarkable. Um, we've got tons and tons of kids that come in after school um, and we offer tons and tons of services. Um, you know, more than just the materials that you think of when you think of a library. You know, we're just really like, I feel like we're the kitchen. Sometimes people say libraries are like the living rooms of communities. I feel like we're more like the kitchen because <laughs> you know how it is when you go to some place and everybody just kind of gathers and congregates and it really just feels like a little bit yeah. Did you guys set a record? I mean, for like the yes. Franklin County or something? Right. So I dug into the numbers more deeply, and here's actually if you're the kind of person like me that really enjoys digging into to numbers and stuff. Um, yeah. Pass them that way. Yeah, that way. Um, uh, yeah so I, I dug further. So you're, what you're looking at here is a comparison of all the Franklin County libraries and. Um, you're seeing you the, all of them related to um, the uh, kind of library they are. We are obviously a municipal library, some are incorporated, and Fairfax is a community library. But So um, it's just an alphabetical order because all Excuse the members... Me, what does that mean, community library? What's the difference? Uh, community library is one that's combined with a school. So, so like it used to be. Like yeah. it used to be, yeah. 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 Um, so, um, you know, if you're just kind of moving down the columns, you know, population, straightforward. Um, but, you know, square footage, we're actually bigger than, than uh, the medians of most libraries in the county. Uh, we're open the exact same number of hours, both the average and median. Um, yet, we have really high number of annual visits. Um, in the, the brownish, orangish column, is the, some of this is kind of like a little bit murky because of COVID stuff. Um, and different libraries reporting different time periods and so different COVID closures. But we have, like, we had higher in this time period than St. Albans even with their, 
much larger population. Um, we have the second highest in the entire county for this reporting period. Um, and in fact, uh, in 2019, before the pandemic, we landed on a superlatives list for the state uh, that we had the, the third highest number of visits in all 63 towns that are the, in our, in our um, population range. So there's, uh, you know, we've got higher than average circulation of physical items. We're at the top for per capita visits. So there's just no question that this library is just rocking it. It's really, really cool. Yeah, so um, it looks like 20, 9,700 thus far this year? Just this year. We're, we're going to wow. blow past, way blow past 10,000 visits just wow. this year. Um, so it's clearly, um, you know, something that the community values and uses, really, really uses. <coughs> You know, all the kids after school, the programs, um, all of the services really add up to a really relevant, a really relevant uh, resource for this community. Charm Retreat this Saturday. <laughs> um, and that's really cool. I think what also I've really noticed and valued about this community is the collaboration. So like Charm Retreat this year, that's, that's Bent Northrop, that's the community center, that's the rec committee, and that's the school. You know, all four of kind of a big, main players we're all coming together and, and putting on the biggest things so it's really um you know i could i could go on and on but i know we've got to fit ourselves into the meeting um but uh yeah circulation is up so it's it's just really um a cool thing i was talking to gavin the other day like <clears throat> everybody's like oh well, the internet's going to kill libraries but it's actually kind of the opposite like countrywide like Library card owner holdership is the highest it's ever been, um, and the digital use of digital resources is leveled off at about twenty five percent. So, people want resources, they want books, they want that connection they get when they come in. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got you know people coming in for some reading program that, well, it just had a really great, 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 uh, robust summer reading program this year. The kids, we had over a hundred kids pledge to read. Oh, I said, I forget my data. It was well over 2,000 books that they pledged to read, so that was really cool. But then you've also got your elderly Fairfielder who doesn't have internet access. He comes in twice a week, checks his email, and he doesn't have a family close by, to be honest. If something happens to him, we're going to be the ones who know this. So anyway, not to get all sappy, but it's cool. I'm really enjoying this role. So does anybody have any? Questions for me about what's been going on there. Or we're working on the budget now for this next year. Um, it's all it works when I go in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's always nice to see Gavin. It's you know it's it's really great how um, since so many different people in the community use it, it's been such a fast way to get to know this community. Um, so uh, that's been really fun. Um, especially the kids after school. Um, just being on the school property is so, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not technically, but being right there next to the school, that those kinds of relationships are really, really good to, to develop. So um, it gets kids off to a really good start. So, I've had all the kids from uh, fifth through eighth grade come down for visits and, and uh, field trips and that sort of thing. So um, I just have really. Well, they still have a library within the school, right? They do have a very small. Yeah library within the school. So uh, I've made a connection with that librarian and we've coordinated on some things already. So yeah, yeah. When she saw the space, she was just like, wow. <laughs> you know, really, really, really fortunate community to have uh, that kind of space so close to the school. Um, so that's a great positive. So we got some more questions or do you have something you would like to present to us? If Tell us more things. I wanted to say that um, the, the select board and the trustees have both mentioned in, that in passing and in meetings that it would be nice to open the conversation, open the, the door to dialogue and um, connecting how to how you're about how you're communicating, when you're communicating, and and what each of you needs in order to be um, to feel like you're up on everything. So uh, I thought that this might be a good time for you to also talk about what kind of communication needs each of the, the entities. You know, when do you want to hear what and by whom? <laughs> that might be a nice time, to, a nice thing to talk about. 
And I know the select board, I mean, I know that the trustees have been doing quite a lot, so um, maybe it sounds like you've already given sort of the, how much is being done but um, and how well we're doing it, but maybe just how do we communicate it together and get on the same page. Yeah. Well, one conversation that we're going to have, you know, collaboratively is you're working on your budget, we're working on our budget, and I, I, you know, we talked briefly about it last time. You've enacted a couple significant things in a recent memory. One of which we passed along formally to you a requirement that we have for the uh, budgeting policy or best practices, I guess. And I know that's kind of a uh, not something that you've totally. Um, we're totally, you know, completely through, but, um, you know, we'd like to know if there's any obstacles or any relief or any, I mean, that, that's maybe something that we could talk about for any changes that you, and I'm kind of relying on Kathy to, you know, like the nuance of what that actually means in terms of, you know, transparency, accountability, and things that might be a little bit different from what we've done in the past. I know there's been some conversations even at our level, but that's one thing. And then also you announced to us last, was it last, two meetings ago about a significant change in uh, the way the endowment is going to be treated going forward. Yep. And um, so th those are those are two, you know, as, you know, money is a way, a good way to communicate, and we should communicate about money. And those are two significant areas. Uh, it, well, I guess three would be the budget, then the adoption of the policy, and then you know, implementation of your how you're going to treat your endowment going forward. I think all three of those represent change and progress. Yep. And uh, I don't know if anyone had any other thoughts on that, but um, I can speak briefly to, the, to our budget that for this year, for this year coming. Um, still a work in progress, as you see, there's a lot of uh, analysis here, but um, some of the highlights are uh, there will be an increase in the tax request. Um, we haven't figured out the exact amount yet, but um, health insurance, as you, as you guys probably know as well, is an 8% uh, 8, 8 increase. Um, another issue that's significant is that um, <coughs> we were, we're going to have to make a significant, uh, we're considering making a significant adjustment to um, the assistant salary, um, Wendy's salary. <coughs> we're not sure yet. It's, it's, it's something we're discussing. Um, uh, it's, it's based on um, um, hours that we should have been covering uh, in the past and, and we hadn't been. Um, so Sarah's been working with us to identify uh, the, what she feels is the increase we need in hours. So that, that, that could be a, um, a significant number in the budget. Um, maintenance has gone up. Um, repairs and maintenance, you know, the building is now, what, 10 years old or, or 2008 or 12 years old. And so we have noticed that a few things are beginning to require upgrades and maintenance, like lighting. Sarah has, um, has been working with an electrician to upgrade uh, the lighting, the interior lighting. Um, and it's mostly about, well, like, uh, like our emergency lights are all expired and don't work anymore. And the exit signs now have expired and need to be replaced. And so some of it is, uh, some of it is upgraded, but because they're not functioning currently, and, and, and some is just required uh, repair. Right. Yeah. Um, so the budget will reflect an increase for repairs and maintenance. Um, and then we are probably going to reduce our books and programming a little bit. Um, we've been having some discussions with the friends. Um, they are happy to support books and, and programming, so there might be some adjustments um, to those columns. And then, um, so 
kind of hitting the same spots of inflation that you guys are. Well, there's yeah. fuel. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, of course we've made small adjustments to you know things like electricity, trying to anticipate increases. Um, you you probably have as well in your budget drafts. Um, fuel oil. Um, that is the uh, the big items. We don't. We do expect a small a surplus still of around thirty six hundred, thirty three hundred dollars. Um, we think that it kind of adjusts. It kind of changes um, as the numbers come in toward the end of the year. But um, we do expect a small surplus, which would be then transferred to the capital reserve fund, which we now have in place. But that is like the leftover from last year. The le yeah, well, yeah. That we haven't transferred yet right. into right. that reserve fund that was approved. Right. What are you thinking about that grant writer? What, that kind of came up. What do we? What do you? you you're going to have your separate. We want with zero, okay. because because you pushed it. Last year's exactly. money is back in this building, exactly. and you guys will, and then next year we'll we'll reallocate. You looking at LEDs for any of your lighting stuff, or is that an yeah, opportunity? Yeah, the, the schoolhouse pendant lights that are in the main stacks area, three of them are completely out, but it's ballast issues, and so that's why we're instead of just repairing those three, we thought, okay, let's change those over to LED, um, like you know, instead you of painting. You them almost have an efficiency. efficiency. Right, right, and using you know, because efficiency Vermont right now has a lot of good rebate programs and that sort of thing, so. Um, the electricians can get all those rebates for us. So it'll be, yeah, those, the... the when those when you said the exit lights expired, you mean they, they no longer work? Is right, that, yeah, the, the ones that turn on, like have, if the power goes out, I don't yeah, see Yeah, ours have, ours have um, little lights and a battery backup. Oh, so okay. when the power goes out, those turn on and, and shine light in the room. Those batteries have gone. I see. And they cost more to replace yeah, the batteries yeah. than to replace the units. So those mm -hmm. are going to get replaced. Um, cool. Or they're about to go, yeah. Right. All our smoke detectors just expired too, so we have to do those too. David Parsons is actually helping us with that project. So, um, yeah, it's just that age of the building all of a sudden, you know, those new things that go right. that need to be. Oh, and then the big item is, and it, we're not quite sure um, how it affects the budget, is the sidewalks on the side of the building. You know, there's a side entrance. Um, those sidewalks have settled, um, creating a ponding condition, actually that Sarah has pointed out to us, and um, you know, water could freeze, someone could slip. And so I think about 12 sidewalk panels need to be replaced toward the school end of, of that sidewalk. This, the sidewalk right in front, the front door seems to be okay. Um, so the curbs probably have to be redone. We're considering not having a second curb cut, just one ADA curb cut. Um, we don't need two, um, and that could help with, you know, uh, keeping the water flowing. The, 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 our driveway is not pitched very well. I don't know. The water moves very slowly across that library. In hindsight, the library could be six inches higher, but uh, and, you know, with the, with the grade sloping up a little bit more, um, so we might delete that ADA curb cut. Um, so we've been trying to get prices for that concrete work um, met four contractors so far. None followed up with estimates. Um, I, I, put, I called everybody again, I guess, today, actually. Um, so we're still working on it. I don't know if you guys know about uh, a contractor who can do some sidewalks. Um, contractor to get anything done. Yeah. <laughs> It's a small job, um, so that's probably why. Tom was just throwing out, considered putting blacktop on top of. We had not considered that. Uh, it's a possibility. Um, it might not be the perfect solution, but it might get it temporarily done so that you weren't worried about. <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple of falls already, so that's the concern. So that's why we're paying attention to it, yeah. Yeah, as a... As a um, a temporary measure, you, you could just pound some blacktop on over it. Um, well, if anybody knows of a 
concrete contractor who might be interested in that, let us let us know. Because I've called quite a few, at least twelve. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And even like I called Connor, you know, they they're the guys who built the building. We asked them, could you just general contract this for us? You know, we're not asking for a, a handout. Um, you know, uh, I've called Ireland, Harrison, so looking for some other you know guys who Dan, buy concrete. Dan Menard, called Dan. He's a little smaller than us. Dan Menard. Yeah. Is he related to Norm? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I talked to Norm, um, but he's actually told me the other day he's going to stop by and look at it. But I haven't called. Him. Maybe I did call Dan Menard. Concrete work. Peter, what's the guy, what's the parent guy up in the Innsbruck? Are you a parent? Oh, Peanut. But Peanut, he's gone to his maker. Oh. So that, that's the other um, significant uh, issue that we have. Um, next year we plan to power wash, is that what the <laughs> power wash, the, you know, the siding um, carefully. Is cement board? It's cement siding on strapping. Um, but there's a lot of bugs and um, that have built up over the years. Thanks. But every, other than that, um, the building seems there's a couple cracks on the interior, but uh, I don't think it's of concern um, in the sheetrock. Um, other than that, I think the building's okay. So that that was. Uh, the last thing for sort of um, that may affect the budget uh, or may not. We haven't we haven't figured out that part of it yet. Have your <clears throat> investments taken quite a hit this year? The what? The investments have they taken quite a hit this year? Sure have. So as of the last statement, we are down two uh, around up two eighty. Two hundred eighty thousand um, dollars in the account. So, so that that puts us at about one point six two one right now, down from nine nineteen oh one. The trustees have done a lot of good work on several policies and financial policies and we're done in. Policies being worked on. All of our policies are up in the air right now. They're all being reworked. Right. Yeah. What was it to the mission? Uh, the invest, uh, well, the, the investment policy, the financial, the financial policy, and the donation policy donation are all um, yeah. with edits and draft form right now. So, because I know you had, as you mentioned, you know, wanting to kind of do some alignment around mm -hmm. financial policies and that sort of what thing. What changes on the do donation? What, what, what was what were the issues there that you looked at? Uh, it was some coordinations with the friends, uh -huh. because They're much of our donations, if not all, currently all go to the friends. Mm -hmm. So you walk up to the front desk and you write a check for hundred dollars. That goes to the friends. It doesn't go to the library, you know. Uh, so we've been having discussions with the friends. On how that money flows to the friends and how it how it flows back to the library. Um, um, it's uh, in the process. Is yeah, it's in the process. process. It's in the process. You know, the the friends work very hard and they do a great job with their bid event. And they raised this year. They raised twelve, roughly, or with with the um, the event plus the raffle. Thirteen. Thirteen. Um, and you know the, that money is is at the the how that money is spent is the discretion of the friends. You know they decide how it is is to be used. Um, but we've been having discussions where you know some some donations may just come back right back to the library in in a more regular fashion, like quarterly, without restrictions, without without specific instructions so that we could use, Sarah could use, to, you know for library operating costs. So that's a whole discussion that's, that's in the process, which is going to affect our donation policy. Mm -hmm. So we're really at a point developmentally where we're really trying to codify 
some of our policies, review them, make them more current, um, our relationships with our friends, yeah. um, the whole financial stuff. Um, we did establish an MOU, a Memo of Understanding, with the friends, so we've gotten that taken care of. Trying to look forward to make these uh, more part of the fabric of the library so people don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you have new people come on um, the board. You know, try to uh, make those part of the, the fabric. And I just want to add really quickly that um, another thing that you've done is uh, discussed what other communities do in terms of memorandums of understanding or communication processes between the municipalities and the libraries, so that that is also something you're thinking about. And um, I thought that that was really what the case. Well, that would be something we would, um, you know, um, ask you if that would be something that we might move to working together on. Um, Sarah had sent us some sample uh, memos of understanding between libraries and um, select boards like Morristown or Swanton. It's that very kind of thing. Let's kind of codify um, what our arrangements are and what are the agreements so we don't have to come back each time there's an issue. And you sent us some examples. We met with a guy who is um, part of the extension service, specializing in libraries. That's he go, he's a Georgia library trustee, but he also works for the extension service. And he said, you know, you might uh, want to talk about that with your select board. So that's something we would look forward to, and it would whatever we did it would be particular to this group. Makes sense, right? If you get drafts, yeah. We like paper. <laughs> we can give you paper. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that'd be good. You know, uh, I wouldn't expect it to be very long and, you know, not super complicated. But it'd be, you know, maybe like budgeting time frames and, you know, capital investments or, you know, you, that you've, with the investment, you know, formalize the, your plans with the investment endowment. Yeah? I don't know what other people so think about that. What about the rest of you? Yeah, keep packing away at it. That's what we've done so far to get what do you think? Keep packing away at it. That's what we've done so far to get where we are at this point. So. The more we learn about it, it's just, you know, comparisons like this gives us a better idea of how we fare usage. I know it gets used a lot. I mean, they use a lot myself, so. But, yeah, you get it over there and make full use of it in my mind. So if we were to create kind of like a, a very rough draft of, a, of an MOU and yeah. kind of present that, would that be something you're interested in? Yeah, that'd be good. Sure. Yeah, take her time with it. I mean, take, take her time, no, no stress. I think, I think that there are some questions that will probably come up that you can bring to the select board too. Just, you know, like if you get to something that has always been, I wonder what we're supposed to do and what the select board is doing in this topic area. Um, I think that there, there have been times when I've been in some of your meetings where that's come up. For example, looking for, for um, Vendors, we you know we, we went together on a mowing con a mowing bidding process, which worked out well. The timing was right, um, but you know that that might be something to consider a bullet a bullet about when something comes up. This is how we're going to handle it and how we're going to do it together or separately and for what reasons. You know so, but you'll see as you go through questions and uh, just would love to encourage you again with that conversation and and communication eye toward you know working together agreements right to the select board and we can work on that together. Mm -hmm. Many of those MOUs detail, you know, basically, you know, 
because municipal libraries are municipal buildings, like, you know, who's responsible for the interior? Who's responsible for the exterior? You know, I can get, you can go in the weeds pretty fast, and I hear, I hear you're like, oh, it can be a short thing for sure. Um, so those are the kinds, some, you know, there's some more general things to them, but. Uh, those are things we would need to tailor together. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I have just want to mention, I really have appreciated my relationship with Kathy, and I think that that's been a real uh, cool strength that has developed. You know, she started just a couple months before I did, and which was which was really fortuitous, I think, for both entities to really kind of get, okay, what is the, you know, this is how it was done before, what makes most sense to us, how can we align? Um, that's been a real nice We can cost contain. Yeah, yeah, and just, you know, smooth, make things run smoothly and feel like a, a true partnership with great. I um, just a dumb question, I guess. Mm -hmm. When you said you had money that's given to the library, why do you give it to the French? Why don't you keep it? That's a good question. <laughs> that's so much of stuff we're working out. That's that's so yeah, I mean, unless working. they specify giving it to the French, why don't you guys keep it, put it in your budget? I mean, I don't know why you would give up money, unless you've got a lot of money you want to give away. I'll take a little bit, but. So you have a check written to you guys. I don't know why you would give it to the friends. So we're going more toward that direction, what you just said? We're going that way for some of the money? I, I would have gone there a long time ago. For some of the money? It's actually not that, it's it's not that large amount that goes. No, but $100 here, $100 there, $10 here, $10 there, it all adds up. And that's what we're talking about. We, so we are going to make it, we think we're going to make a change where money like that does go straight back to the library. But. Like, I'll give you an example of, of where it gets complicated. Say somebody comes in and they want to make a donation and they have a very specific idea about how they want the money spent. I want it spent in this way for this purpose only. Like that, that you almost need a management plan for that money. Then I would be happy to have the friends manage that donation because, you know, they can work with the donor, they can set the, they can set the um, spending um, guidelines. And then the money will come back to us. So the friends are very helpful for something like this, as an example for something like that. Um, Didn't they do that for the author series? There was a very generous donation, but there was um, what's called a restricted donation. Right. This is all in uh, American Library Association. They have all these kinds of rules and regulations that we need to follow. Um, and so restricted donations say, I'm going to give you a big chunk of change, but I want you to use it for this and this and this. And I think that's where the author series, we had that series of people, we can't pay, we can't do that within our budget. We can't afford that. So it was an extra and it was a treat for the community um, that we, we couldn't have supported out of our yeah. budget. Same, yeah. I'm sorry. So that it's that kind of thing, and so it's usually dealing with much larger amounts of money. There, there is separate five hundred one c three, and so when they do their own fundraising, then that, you know, they are fundraising. So there's a distinction between fundraised funds versus just direct donations too. So that's kind right. of what's getting worked out. Too. It's not peculiar to our library. Right. Friends are part of. Um, many, many libraries, and they're considered fundraisers. And so they exert, um, a, a, you know, a tremendous amount of energy and organization. If you've been to our uh, thing in the fall, um, you know, it's quite something, but it's all because of their work. And so they do raise um, a lot more money than we might have with somebody coming in for instance, oh, during COVID, you know, I, I really enjoyed and been uh, grateful for coming in and being able to use the computer here. Here's some money. That's happened to you, right? Mm -hmm. So an example like that is that would go to the friends, and then quarterly, that would be returned to the library as revenue. So that's a, a new discussion we've been having with the friends. It's and still in process. It's, it's a process, but I, I think it's generally agreed upon. Um, Right? I mean, yes? That's the most recent draft. Yeah, okay, draft. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
learn something every time we talk, right, Tom? Is there any other discussions anybody would like to bring up or point out? Or? Well, just an observation. Before COVID, I remember we had um, we had a trustee who was a regular visitor to your meetings. It was Sue Casalan. And we so like the other one that brought those maple cookies. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like Sue she, too, but she came. She came. How often did she come? At least to one of your monthly meetings. Yeah, I would and, say something of that nature. Yeah, and she would share with you what's going on at the library, and then it was just that connection, reciprocal, you know. And I think that was really, really important. Really important. So that we didn't get siloed into, you know, what's going on here, what's going on there. And then COVID hit and that stopped. So, you know, hopefully we can resurrect that. I think that would be a really important thing to do, to, to keep that communication open. Put so, it in, put it, we'll put it in the MOU. <laughs> cookies, right, right, right down to cookies. cookies. <laughs> who's, who's bringing cookies? Maple. Um, yeah, those are for good. <laughs> So just a question about the MOU, what would you like, would you like to see some samples? Would you like to, because it seems to me it's something we should do together for it to have some teeth. Yeah, committees don't write policies, individuals do it, committees critique. So what I, what I, as one individual of the select board, I'd like, you know, I'd like to see some drafts from Kathy that have gone through, you know, from, from representing our interests and we could take our time and kind of mark it up. The select board wants, we don't want a lot of paper. We just, I mean. I thought you said you liked paper. No, we like paper, but we don't like a long paper. We no, want paper. just big bullets, just no like paper. budget process, you know, what, it doesn't have to be comprehensive. It, I think Kathy understands what I'm saying. D Dave isn't here, I'm speaking for Dave. We don't want to, like, we have a kind of an MOU with the rec department. We want like one oh, page. Do. Yeah, you we do. want one page, hit the boat, highlights, make sure there's some kind of understanding. And if we want to add to it, we can add to it. But we want to just walk before we run. We don't want to bury people with paper. We don't want to intimidate people. We yes, don't if you bring some, bring some of the most simplistic ones <laughs> from various towns. I mean, would that around be helpful Franklin, to run even around Franklin County, I think would be the, you know, and we don't need something from Chittenden or that. But. No, sure, but their I, own yeah. local area. Like, okay, that was my question. Would yeah. it be helpful just to start out by just just sort of like this looks at some of our neighboring towns? Yeah. If we could take this, get a copy of some of the MOUs from our neighboring towns and just to start there yeah. before we try to fashion it for us. There's not that many that okay. have been already established. Um, and just want to comment that so many people's funding models are so very different. Mm -hmm. The fact that there's an endowment on this one, for instance, uh, makes it very different from Swanton's, say. Yeah. Well, no, that's not true. Swanton has an endowment. But um, anyway, in any case, you kind of got to take them with a little bit of a grain of salt from that. Right. And that's know. why if we had a mixture of them, right. we'd right. know the ones but that have endowments, the yeah. ones that totally right. tax funded. Or right. So some, yeah. you know, they might be from other parts of Vermont just to get some variety. but. Um, so that might be step one, <coughs> and for just, you know, information, just gathering information. Mm -hmm. And okay. if you provide me with um, the basic topic areas of most MOUs and mm -hmm. some examples of what that looks like, okay. I can bring that to the select board and we can talk about if those topic areas make sense for you to include and we can move from there. Step one. Okay. Good. Good. Cool. Little paper. <laughs> baby steps. Baby steps. I, I'm, I regret, baby steps. I, I'm sorry, I regret when I was showing you my thing. I just want a little bit that notice how high we are with everything that we do with the lowest number of staff hours <laughs> amongst, amongst of our uh, almost the lowest number of staff hours. Well, I'll pat you because Thank I know we you. can't reach out. Thank you. In terms of budgeting right now, so this um, trustees normally will put together their budget and bring it to the select board in December. Sarah and I have talked 
Um, and I was planning on speaking during my admin report that I would like us to start as a select board do it working on our budget in the next, if we can start making a plan for the next meeting. The problem is, the, the not the problem, but there's an issue with timing around um, uh, cost of living increases and having the, the trustees finish their budget first and adopt it for the next year before it comes to the select board assumes a certain salary um, and it's not always in line with this, the, the salary, the cost of living increase that we see with all of the other um, the other employees in the district, in the area of the municipality. So I thought that it might be wise for us to consider whether we can change our timing a little bit so that the, that can be aligned. It's been a conversation point. So um, just something to talk about later, maybe in our next meeting, but even in the next meeting, I think that our next meeting is the Monday before your Thursday meeting that you wanted to finalize your, <laughs> your budget, which is not when we are going to have our budget done. So it just becomes this sort of, um, it's just a timing issue that we need to resolve, I think. So we're too early. Yeah, back it up. <laughs> That's good that you're on top of this, but it's, it's definitely, um, I think that historically we've done things a little different and maybe we can move toward a more aligned process. So what will that look like for us then? What? Well, we have to, I'm, I'm just saying that we don't have a cost of living increase number for you. And last year, if I, if I recall correctly, we didn't have that until almost the end of December. Wow. I'm pretty sure. So wow. I'm not exactly, this is again, this is my second time going through the process. Um, well, we'll finish our budget like 99% and then if we have to tweak it at the last, at the minute with the final number, we'll, we'll consider that. Yep. We'll be ready. Yeah. What does that column refer to? Uh, for capita visits would be um, if you're uh, comparing the population to the annual visits. So for each um, person, um, how many visits there are. So we've got way more visits than we do people, which means people are coming back and back and back. So repeat customers. Repeat customers. We have a very high rate of repeat customers. That I've got a door counter on the door that marks how many times that door opens and closes. Oh, that's and why you, so you stand there and yeah. the day. And I swear I clear it after the cleaning person's there because she goes in and out. You have the kids alive and forth, right? I do account for that. I account for that. But, does some... it, does it, but is that what Stu need? Not that I really care, but I mean, yeah. is that what does the, how do you do, how do you keep track of the uh, visits? So the, the, every time somebody comes and passes the sensors that are on either side of the door, it counts as oh, okay. numbers. And so at the end of the day, we take that number and divide it by two because somebody comes right. in and theoretically they go back out, hopefully. And, um, so, but then, you know, put a reality check on it because kids do come in after school, drop their backpack, go to the store, come back in, that sort of thing. But the fact remains that most days that door counter reads close to 200. There was a day that that door counter read 373. Wow. That's that many times of looking up. Maybe we set up a toll. We had to set up a toll there. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So it's Just a, kidding. it's a, you know, that desk is a busy place to be. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for the information. Good luck joining Continue. together. Continue your success in your visits. Good. Thank you for the Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. That is, uh, I can see you have some, you know, that is a significant number. We're looking at it. Yeah. We're looking well, at it. I, that was the first thing Peter mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for all you do. Did join virtually? Do you want me to take this with me, or would you like me to leave it and I'll get it tomorrow? I it, it's either either way it's fine with me. Whatever works for you. Is that it's an amazing okay. thing? Okay. Yeah, you can turn it off. Yeah, it's nice. It's really an amazing thing. Thank you. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. You're, thank you're welcome. welcome. Thank you for the meeting.
interrupt you? No, no, no. Okay, okay. I just, it just okay. got on it for a second. So Bill Kimball did Thank you. Good night. With us See you later. Take okay. Care. Hey, Linda. Yeah. What was that, Kathy? Bill Kimball, superintendent of uh, Midwest, has come to say hello. So I'm hello, Bill. Right. Such a home. Wait till you're ready. Yeah. You're me. Ah, don't you cheer. Well, first I wanted to come and just say hello. I haven't had a chance to do that. Uh, this is my second year, but I last year with COVID, I kept myself pretty uh, focused on the, on the inner workings of the schools. And this year, wanted to get I've had a chance to sit with the city council, with the city, and with the towns, uh, St. Albans Town Select Board, and now a chance to talk with you. Uh, one, just as a matter of introduction, one of the things that I've, I've believed in all my career is um, just really good community engagement. Or that's just going out and saying hi, folks. Maybe we should introduce ourselves to you. That would be great. <laughs> you are. That would be great. Why don't we start with Ron? Sorry about my voice, but Ron Bocas. Nice to meet you, Ron. Hi. Uh, Brian Juby. Okay. Gavin Ryan. Yep. Tom Howard. Kathy um, so I just Melissa, or Melissa. Melissa. Uh, Melissa. and Nate Mo Persons. and Mo or her town forum. Owner. Keep things running for us up here. Great. And yeah. Linda, our town clerk. Yeah. And Melissa's also on zoning planning. Okay. Great. Mo and I've talked a few times on those inclement weather days. <laughs> They're fun ones to have. Yeah. Um, so that that was part of uh, just coming and saying hi and saying I'm always willing to talk, to folks. Uh, take any questions you have. If you have certain questions, I may not know them sitting here at the table. Maybe we we'll get them, bring them back. But I'm always glad to do that. Uh, you've got a great community here. This is um, it's my second year superintendent, my fourth year here in the district. I don't know how many folks know that. Um, I was the assistant superintendent my first two years and supervised the construction project across the street. Made sure that that got done as we were working on Fairfield. Um, and then BFA as well, and then was also an interim principal that first year. So I had a few things on that plate, but um, in the second year, we're working on getting communities to come out and really the boards had a objective to really take a look at the mission that was developed when Maple Run was formed and when the merger happened and say, this is what people really want for our young adults. And uh, so they have a subgroup going that's a goals group that's looking at the work um, talking with community members about what are your hopes and dreams what are for our students at Maple Run what are the places we need to improve and one of the things I've come to do is to invite you we have a session for government officials happening on November 3rd which I'll send you an email Kathy and you can forward that to everyone the times and dates of that um, but we also have other listening sessions going on we've had it out on Facebook it's been in the newspaper um, Doing that work right now, so that was my, my big piece for coming. But I take any questions, any concerns you have, or praise as well. We all have like praise, but well, don't scare us. How much do you think you're going up this year? So it has the biggest power. Yeah, that's, it's, it's it's a hard place. We haven't. I don't know right now with the inflation piece. The board's sitting next uh wednesday to sit and set the budget parameters before we go and build a budget i'm bringing a different process to the board where the board says here are the different um pieces of the budget and what is the parts that you would like to put on there for inflation so that and then what do you want for an overall and know what that will do with the program of the overall budget Our well you've seen an actual tax rate that's gone up a lot of that's been due to um has been to the property tax values and the evaluation. The actual education tax rate since the merger has stayed flat at 143. The increases you have seen is due to common level of appraisal. And that's been shown since Maple Run's been formed. So I don't know what, I don't know right now because we're just getting into that piece. Yeah. And you are too, as a select board. Oh, yeah. It's going to hit everybody. It's going to hit everybody. Yeah, I know. We, what I've gotten down in Vermont. Gas and the electric and out of GMP, GMP saying two percent for electricity, and Vermont Gas, which they don't. The only facility that's not on Vermont Gas is the Fairfield Center School, so they're on oil. Uh, but Vermont Gas is. Do you want to bring that pipe up over the hill? Or? I don't know if I can <laughs> do that one. I'd like to be able to do something like that. That'd be nice because it's a really small increase for yeah. Vermont Gas. It's 
they're t- telling us seven and a half cents, not seven and a half percent. So well, that's kind of that's really nice. But well, I got that the other day. Yeah. But what we're looking for insurance rates are insurance rates. You have better health insurance than I heard for the Vermont State uh, Teachers Association, which is the statewide insurance rate. It's, we're seeing ten to fifteen percent is what we're getting told to get ready for. <clears throat> Just on health insurance. Have you reached out to Vermont Gas? I've talked to Neil Lunderville a couple of times. I said there's a lot of sugar makers in Fairfield that love that, and we, you know, kind of chuckle yeah. about it. But we, you know, his response was, you know, we don't have it. There wouldn't be an anchor. But boy, Fairfield School would be. Yeah, I haven't talked to them. Since. <coughs> uh, well, I bet you know because they they can't they can't go any other they can't go south. No, they're stopped. They kind of stop. You know, so you know. Uh, we are suggesting they go east. Why not? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if there's a region, you know, like a school, and uh, even you know they they park those um, those mobile units at ski areas, ski areas and stuff, you know, for the whole season they run a couple of mobile units, but those are bigger than a, you know most sugar in operation. Yeah. Because I said, hey, set up a mobile unit, but yeah. but you know. I was gonna say, you want to buy a school? We got a nice school across the street. Yeah. <laughs> I know it was inside that one. <laughs> and then yeah. what, it, what it would do for us? For we are brainstorming about that school. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, just trying to senior housing, you know, some kind of a. It always seemed every time it got sent back to the town, but four or five years later, the school wanted to use it again. <laughs> That's been the previous history. With it. Well, the school's grown. I mean, yeah. the, the whole district's grown right now for population. Yeah. When you so do, I don't have those numbers up. So that when you the Fairfield headcount is the demographic. Right. Show. Right now the Fairfield. K, I can give you the K eight off the top of my head. I was just working on tonight. Mm-hmm. Part of it's the budgeting reasons because we start to we're looking at what's in the, what's an equity budget across the district look like. Fairfield Center School last year to this year really hasn't changed much for the headcount. It's right around two fifty. But overall in Maple Run, we're growing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great. It's or like a, what? Two percent? Five percent? One percent? Um, I would say I've got to do quick math in here. About a hundred kids over twenty-seven hundred. So three. Mm-hmm. Rough percentage sitting here at the table without whipping out my phone and doing calculations. So it's not declining numbers. Like no, I, I I worked in Central Vermont for all my career, and as a super my seven years of superintendents. See, in a district that had 1,600 kids, we went down almost 200 kids over that time, and I was having to reduce force left and right to keep the budgets because of what was happening in the cost for people. It's nice to work in a place where that's not happening. Well, and I suspect it will be even more so with that, was it Beta that's going in? Beta's going in with 300 right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in good paying jobs. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, those are supposed to be, I think, I think they start at 60 yeah. in that place. Same with us, housing. You know, oh, oh that's, that's the hard part right now, is housing and space. I mean, our, our, the town school and the city school and BFA are pretty much maxed out for space. But I meant just for the people, that was 300 people. Right, no. There's not 300 houses available. No, there isn't. There isn't. There's some housing developments in the they town. They may be but, trucking in, but... <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, you know, I don't want to get off too yeah. off track here, but so how bad did our scores do in Maple Run as a result of, I just saw the headline, you know, the statewide average, I think it was eighth grade, math and eight reading. Four. Eight and fourth? Yeah. Eight and fourth, it's an eight, it's an eight source. What the eight shows is that there's about a third, about a third of the kids are on grade level. We're pretty much comparable to that. We'll be releasing some data on this. We're looking at the 16th at our second board meeting in November. What's the board going to do for like to address diminishing scores as a result of the stress of COVID or whatever? I mean, is, is that on the... So we have an envisioning plan that's in place that we put in place as part of the state recovery to access the grants of what we're doing. We put in a lot of mental health supports for students. We have a lot of personnel that are running on... on um, SR 1, 2, and 3, which is basically the relief funds. And we put those people in place in the school system to keep kids in school right now. This is the biggest piece of school we're after. That I'd like to say the learning loss is number one, but that's not number one. Number one is just keeping kids in school and getting kids back to school. We had a lot of people who said, 
I'm not coming to school. And that's across the state. And it's sad, but that's what we have. We can't teach them if we can't get them there. And that's what we have to do first. So they're considered truant at this point, or what? There, there is no truancy. There's no actual truancy. Are they considered legally truant? Yes. There is no actual truancy because of the state does not have the ability, either DCF or the attorney, attorney's office, to respond. They are so large down staff. I'm sorry, but our social systems have, that's what's happened during the pandemic, and we're overburdened. They're overburdened. I think we can do it, and we're seeing our numbers come back, and we're seeing a huge attendance retake back up. And that's with another story that was in Dacre this week about how a bunch of people, a bunch of families went to homeschooling and they're coming back to public school. So we're getting people back as we have to build that confidence back into that it's a safe system to be in because people were scared during the pandemic of the illnesses and the COVID. And <laughs> no reality, having to teach a kid yourself every day. Every yeah, day. there's that, there's that as well. So those are the pieces that we're having to work on right now. It's, Right in Maslow's hierarchy, of we've got to provide that first, then we can get to the education piece. <coughs> How are you doing with the busing? <coughs> busing's, busing's tough right now. Um, we are up for a new contract for next year, so that's going to be interesting. We've had a five year contract, um, so that's going to be a huge cost piece. Looking just at the consumer price index over the past five years and what's happened. Don't want to say too much publicly because I'm going into negotiations, yeah. but those are the pieces but for the busing. What's your biggest problems? My biggest problems? Our biggest problem is staffing. That's what I was wondering. And so right now we're down four to five licensed positions. We're down about 20 overall. We have 560 total full-time staff in Maple Run. And so we're doing better than last year but we still are down staffing. Um, if anyone knows of someone that's a mechanic, that's a building mechanic, we need two of them. We usually run with about five or six building mechanics to do HVAC, plumbing, electrical, and we're down two and it's really affecting the school system, keeping up with repairs. We're having to contract out, but the problem is just as you were talking about concrete, I could have the same conversation about trying to find someone to do HVAC or electrical work. It's hard to get them. They'll help us when we're in a real pinch and send yeah. something to the back. <coughs> do you have an aging workforce? I mean, do you have... Yeah, we have, we're just like the rest of Vermont. We have an aging workforce. We have an aging teaching force. It's actually not as bad here in BF, in St. Albans area as it was in my previous work experience in Memorial and Washington counties. They're aging quicker. Um, there's more of a family base here in Franklin County, and I, I equate that to the stable population that's around St. Albans. It's not a declining population, especially around the family. I mean, that's what I see in the students, and I see more younger people than what I've had when I look at the demographics of our staff. We're much more uh, level than I've seen in other Vermont, my experience in other Vermont school districts. But I can get you details of all of that, but that's what we have. But I can tell you off the top of my head from just sitting here. <laughs> I would like to follow up with you just formally afterward. I, I hear some rumors about things that are at the high school, and I, I say I don't have any first hand. I was on the Chittenden Central Supervisory School Board for yeah. five years. I was the chair, and I hear rumors, and I go, I have no, I would like to call you. Yeah, you feel free. I can run out. I didn't bring a card in with me, but I've got some out there. I'll, I'll just, I'll, yeah, because I'd like to be able to respond to people when they ask me mention things that I say. I, I'd like to be able to have some authority that is based on something other than rumor. Yeah, and I always welcome, I, I try to run an open line. If it's something the principal should respond to, I'm good about saying, so I don't want to take the principal's authority away, so I'll say, hey, you should talk to the principal. I'm glad to listen, but talk to the principal. Well, I did hear someone complimenting the principal we have here, how much yeah. the school is open. Like, yeah. as a parent or a grandparent, they're welcome you to come in. Yeah, Kelsey's doing a great job. Previous to that, wasn't so welcoming. I was told didn't have any kids or grandkids in yeah. it. So, but yeah, this person. That's what. I, that's really what I for all of our schools. Is that I've heard that too. I've yeah. heard that also. You yeah. know, people began to feel it was more part of the town again. Good. After this Maple Run Association, they were just thinking felt more like it belonged to the community again. Oh, one of the things I say pretty strongly is I have throughout my superintendency is that. 
they're the public, we are a public school, and that's a public school with an apostrophe S. The public owns the school. We're yeah. the public school. And we should be having them be part of our process. And why I'm here tonight. They're all paying for it, so. Sure. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> yeah, a lot of pride. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of pride. So there shouldn't be any problem having town meeting this year then? Um, this is the man that make the decision, I assume. Well, that's why I want to know what we've done before and what the needs are for that. I'd be glad to have that conversation. Well, the previous COVID had always been okay up there. Maybe. It was. It was always a COVID. I mean, it was the last two years been a COVID issue, right? Yeah. 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 Well, COVID. It, the first year was a COVID issue. The second year, the governor signed that we could do it again because we never got a response. But it was a. Tra but I think it, it was, was uncertainty. It was. Like, it was a yeah. transition that was happening right. at the school, and nobody made a decision. Right. But I think and, we felt pretty comfortable with that. Just, yeah. just, just too much risk, and we kind of minimized the. I mean, I'm assuming this year, unless some big flare-up happens. Right. I mean, it's a day. Like we don't kids. We don't kids in there. So yeah. Yeah. I've been plenty of buildings I've worked in before. I, I my background is, as I said, Washington and Lamar County, but I. I live right on the edge of the kingdom, so yeah. I'm, I that's actually I have my doctorate in rural education and town and like this would be the largest school by far. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm talking schools of 60, 80, 120, and this is 250. So, but well, I'm glad you came out. And yeah, got to meet one. I'll send uh, some invitations through Kathy. She's been great. A couple times we met. You're all invited to, and if that doesn't work, how many nights this week are you out? Three. <laughs> well, we need, please, please leave. Yeah, <laughs> get home. That's thank what you, goes in the role. For, yeah, I knew that was part of the role. Yeah, yeah, no. Thank you for coming. Yeah. So you're welcome. Thank you, thank you yeah. for what you do. Good luck with everything. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> Mo, roll you along so you go home to a bed. Another easy day at the office? Yeah, another easy day. Uh, the new truck is in. How does it look? Let's see, I had it on display the other day. I've seen my yeah, truck. Yeah, today was out there. Yeah, today was out there. Yeah. And get it all fluid film. You guys opted not to come, so. Tom, I'm looking at it. Did you hear it? Great. Okay. Leave a look. Well, keep. Okay, well, continue on. <laughs> <laughs> then have, a, have yourself one, two more. Oh, they showed up, everything was right with it, there wasn't any. Yeah. Do you do a formal inspection? Yeah. Like, a, yeah? Yeah. Take it with Something showed up on it wrong, right? And they replaced it before they brought it to us? Uh, yeah, that was uh, the rear end. The mechanism to lock the rear end, which you had to go right back to straight line when you make them. You get to get the part, so that's why it took a little while to get to. Wakens. How do you find something like a differential lock? How do you find uh, that? Yeah, I uh, said you lied when we deal with the salesman. You did have to go back to uh, freight market where they make the trucks and get one, get it here and put it in. But is that something you pick up on the inspection? or? I mean, uh, they do. They oh, did see. when they were. Oh, okay. Because once they get the truck, they go through them and they picked it up. Nice. Um, uh, we did our Lapland grant, our grant from Lapland on blasting, 
Did you? You got more money for it? We, we got a grant for it. We just, we just got it done last week. Or... Was this what by the barn? Yeah, yeah section up here. So put in more room. And you got quite a bit of shop rock out of, out of that. For... Yeah. Very good. When we do a requisition to the state on the grants, we itemize all of, I keep track of all of the um, timesheets that Mo has yeah. approved for the grant across the projects. Mm -hmm. And then we organize them, <laughs> we them and um, we do all yeah. those seem to. So you get nothing kind. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So that make that basically a lot easier to plow because you aren't going to be hitting the ledges at the time of the way. It's a little bit, a little bit more visibility. Yeah. So especially going <laughs> up through in that corner. The next, the next project that we talked about down in that Cap Pond Road when that before you get to Dennis Marshes. Oh yeah. That's narrow. Yeah. And we could take four or five feet up in there easily. Yeah. I've had the honor of taking post pictures of our projects this year, and I say I had the honor because it is really amazing what our group of, of four and, and contractors do out there. It's just, they look great. That's why we hire professionals. Those, those ditches and the plastic and everything with the slopes and we have to describe what has been done and, and take pictures and, and provide that as evidence and it's just really amazing, the pre and the post. I mean, if you look at the before and after pictures, like yeah. black and white, yeah, it's black. It's totally different. It's a totally different you know, brush and ledge and the ditches on like Jouer Road too. I mean, just it's unbelievable. So nice, so nice valley grants. You do that kind of work. Yeah. Well, I'm sure if they see them done, completed, and they know they're happy and they see truly improved the road, visibility, and mm -hmm. maintenance of it. I mean, just you know, water. Yeah, you just make the water quality better coming through those stones instead of running and yeah, just running down the road road. Then in down the road, it's gonna filter yeah. out through the stones. And no, it's why you guys graded off uh, Dennis's hill up there. Yeah. You know, just now, just now that water's going where it should be going, not taking the road out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, just a long hill up there. And so we down here to dog and did some shoulder work, <coughs> which we needed to get. Back here. Um, uh, I think you, you got the salt bid. I do. Uh, Cargill sent in the salt bid for for this um, year. I don't. I'm not hundred percent on what the contract looked like last year, but yeah. um, ninety one dollars a ton. Estimate tonnage. It's six and six hundred and twenty five ton. That's what they got on the paper here. What did we pay for that last year? Eighty something? Yeah. You say eighty three, eighty five? Yeah, right in there. So probably ten dollars more. And that's so basically delivered. Delivered, yeah. Delivered so for ninety one dollars. Paying for the fuel. So I mean I would think even solid went up, you know. You know, it's mm. possible, yeah. Truck truck it definitely has to go up with yeah. the fuel. And I got a email from somebody anyway because uh, of uh, the railroad uh, the might go on strike and they remember uh, the president worked on them, but the union did not accept the, All the conditions con contract so they tell them before November 25th you can get, get your salt. As much as you can. Can because if they go on strike, it they're going to be a yeah. ripple. Effect. It's going to affect the delivery of it. That's where most of salt gets gets here on rail. Yeah. Okay. How much do you have on hand as we speak? A little bit. No, no, no. no. How much minutes. can you put it? Oh, oh, five, probably a hundred ton. <coughs> five loads. <coughs> 
Might be using a little more sand on the roads this year, huh? That's what I'm kind of wondering. Yeah. So. And the sand shed is full. You can't put any in the corner of that. Or yeah, we can. I feel like we'll bring up two. Uh, we got our building down there now, and we can to finish filling it. You know. Oh, you put a room in there for warm water. Yeah, for the water. For the, the water. Pressure, uh, pressure washer. Yeah. I mean, I would, in anticipation, it's not going to cost any more now and later, I would fill up your salt yeah. shed in that corner of the sand shed. Yeah. And then order it as you use it, you can, to, till they stop. Mm -hmm. Or do you have, think you have enough done here? Yeah. Could you make a motion Possibly put it on a little I later if you have to, to make it spread. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to get real. I'll make a motion if we can do that. For a second. What's it, what's the actual motion? Also, we all know. just to uh, fill the salt shed, the sand shed, and, and, and yeah. refill it as you go along, and not yeah. until yeah. they shut us off, or yes, and okay. you yeah. have to make sure you have enough to go to the end of the year. So they're worried about the end of November, possible. They're season. talking uh, November. They said the November twenty fifth. I don't know what, when the unions go back at it. I don't. Yeah. Just so. You know, <clears> I, I just checked to see if I came over here. We'll have to ask our railroad expert over here on this stuff. So, if are would you like to accept the bid as well as yeah. part of that motion, and then I can sign it and send it off? Yeah. To our he gave any choice. I don't think we have a choice in that, but yeah, we can make it part of our motion. Okay. Except that ninety-one dollars. Everybody in favor of this? Loading it up and having it as much as we can be ready. Sure. Okay. No one opposed. So I guess we're done with that one. As long, yeah, as long as it, the motion happened and we mm -hmm. accept that, I can send it and sign it. Um, that sin shed, um, I never did get hold of anybody about hooking propane in there. And uh, just wondering, do we want to go to electric heater or not? That building. How big is the room? Um, 15 by, I think it's, um, Seven eight wide, and how high is the ceiling? Seven, seven, seven eight, seven eight feet, seven feet, ten and a half feet. Yeah. Mr. Weston might be able to help you. He put them in the trigger house and pumped those. For balloons, yeah. we spend a lot of money with them. They should be right on over doing it. Now. Yeah, good luck with them. So, is there a cost factor between the, going with the electric unit and then a gas one? It'll be the price of. Buying it and getting put in. <coughs> install and install. I don't know. Is there a safety thing there with that? With the gas and the, versus the electric? Or? Do we have an account with propane now? Huh? We have propane. Yeah. Yeah, for the fire department. That's for the generator. The yes, that's all we have. Generator. Yeah, the generator. And so that cost is probably pretty high. I'm thinking it's going to be pretty high. But they it only, it only runs uh, 15 minutes of uh, right. two weeks. I mean, that's all I generally run if, unless we need it. Right, but this thing will be running all winter and you keep that water from freezing, right? Yeah. You keep it at 45 or 50 or something. But don't they talk heat pumps, those electric heat pumps all the time? Isn't that the mm -hmm. way they say to go these days? Well, when you get down you to zero temperatures, temperature, yeah. those heat pumps don't kick out much heat. Yeah, well, I mean, if it's built insulated pretty well, it shouldn't take a lot. But I don't think, I, I would just, you know, suggest, you know, I don't think it's much difference between, well, there'd be a cost, but I, I don't think it's going to take much of either electricity or propane. Because it's, it's, is if the, it's insulated really well. Yeah, and is there power enough there? A big enough box that you can put in another heating unit? Well, yeah, so it says, yeah. It's like a 200 amp in there. Yeah. It's all it doesn't. You know, don't take much to heat. No, I know. Oh, I've got a couple of them saddle rooms, and they, and we got them wired up 220, so they a little more effective cost-wise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you could do there, you know, 220, bunch of heater. I personally think this time of year you're probably more likely to get the electric heater in than you are the propane right now. But uh, I'm not pushing one or the other. This is the guy who does my <coughs> installations if you want to just 
I mean, it seems like long term would it be better to have a propane heater in there? If we've known that Jack and Frank, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just call him. That boy, what's his Jake. name? Is it Jake? What's Jordan. 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 I have Jordan's number. If you want yeah. Jordan's number, yeah, see call Jordan. Jordan. See quote Jordan. Well, New Frank. Jack new frames. And the one again, try Larry. Whether Larry's got time enough to do that kind of stuff now, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's just a big job. Yeah. That's why I put it in. And... Yeah. Working just down the road here, so. Was that Super Larry? Yep. Yeah. Gave me. You got room for a tank? Yep. Yeah. Okay, what else you got, Mom? They're all done on Jewel Bridge, is that? So tomorrow we have our substantial completion walkthrough at 9.30. Any of you can come if you like. Um, the, the temporary bridge is out. Everything is pretty much done. Usually at those walkthroughs, they just have a... <clears throat> what I understand is that they, they will look around and find the things that still need to be done. Um, between the... Um, fee, there's a FEMA representative and... Um, St. Orange, um, Stantec, myself, while I was going. So I say I went down two weeks ago and there's still guardrails, but I'm sure they're on now. They're on. Yeah. Yeah. They did it yeah. Friday. Finished Friday on guardrails. When are they going to do those ones down by Pat and Bruce's? A week or two. Snow floods. <laughs> Hopefully not in two weeks. Mm -hmm. but then the, They'll show up when they get there, right? Yeah. They're... Mm -hmm. they're on the interstate right now, doing a bunch of guardrails. I, I talked to him today. See, somebody put a good dimple in the one over here on the corner. Mm -hmm. Was that an accident there, or is it just a hit and miss? No. Tractor trailer around that corner. So, caught it in the back tractor. Is it a local company, or? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, license plate was a Washington license plate. Um, it stopped up to the front wagon fire. So it was something. I mean, that's a damage they should pay for. They cost. Well, the state took care of it. Oh, the state did. God, usually, if there's anything off that 36, that they don't know you. Yeah. Did you use our back over? Did they bring it through? Yeah. <laughs> we took care of it. All. Oh, I see the. I think what so they got it repaired already? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah they were working with They had four was or five it? state trucks. They tried to pick up. It was Thursday, Thursday. Thursday was good Thursday, Friday, yeah. No, maybe it was Friday. Maybe it was when mm -hmm. I went to Tommy's. Because he, he came over to the garage and I told him I had the license plate number. Um, re reason it was on a Sunday when it happened. Uh -huh. Jeff Corey see it. He said, I'll go get the license plate number. He took a picture of the license plate number. That's why I know yeah. about the truck. So you took the corner too short? Or how well, you? when they come from that way in that corner. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, he really cut short then. Well, it's... It's a hard, hard corner. corner. You got a 50 foot, 53 foot trailer, you yeah. got to swing out and make... See, the, uh, when they brought the bridge, the top of the bridge, for the Jewelry Bridge, we were up here co-patching, and he come around that corner, and I see him stop, and it was right about school time, so, you know, oh. traffic was, it ran down. Mm. Knew what he had, he back to get the traffic moving out. Where he could back back out, head down towards here and then back up north road. Yeah. That's how they had to get around that corner, the trucks. And uh, they would have five sections, I think. For they had to, they had to take that corner in. It's a tight, I mean, with a regular car, you kind of got to watch yourself on that corner, so. Just the only thing I I like to I mention a state or something they could widen that corner, you know. Yeah. Well, I was surprised when he came to the garage and he said, uh, "Yeah." I, I told him I'd let's play number. No, no, we'll fix it. So, well, thank you very much. And that that seemed unusual with those guys. Yeah. Of course, it was kind of attached to Route Thirty Six, so. Right. But remember before? Yeah. I they wanted us to even get permits before we could. Blacktop up to 36. Oh. Yeah. And that's what he's fair for. That's why they stopped blacktopping and then come way up to the corner over there on the 
ministry and new uh, church. Yep, that's where the state supposed to be. <laughs> okay. Um, so finish your seeing chat. Uh, oh, the talking about the 550. Just wondering what our plans about replacing it next year or not. Because if we do, um, he's for it where we got it. They're talking if you are planning on getting one, you gotta get on there, get on the list to get it. Over. Did Trust. we get paid for plowing school yard? Has that Did been submitted? I submitted it. Did we get paid? Okay. And to go into that fund for that truck? It. It's supposed to. I, I don't know where it goes. I, I put it into that. In I mean, the, when How much do you know what balance is in that fund at this time? I don't. Small truck. I don't. You know, money's been used to help purchase. That was the reason we were plowing. And we haven't raised that price in. I'm kind of wondering what people are going to be charging. Dude, we haven't raised that price in at least three to four years. I can bring that number to you. Because the next meeting, that would probably be the best way to go about it. Because last time I remember it, Tom, was $135. We plowed and sanded everything. Well, one one was plowing and one sanding was, sanded. yeah. And both of them need to plowing. go up. Because it's a uh, plowing and salting, yeah. Right. They put out a bid request. Recently, for all of Maple Run. So maybe we won't. We better find out because I'm not sure it's not going to bother you guys not have to do that. No, no, no. Sure. 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 I wish we'd have thought of this when he was here. Well, wow, you're going well, to call, call him. him. Yeah, that's all about it. Okay. Please. Yeah, because we've done it for. The bid wasn't. It didn't include Fairfield Center School. Oh, it did. I did see that, and it didn't include that. Because we've gone through two trucks, right? Yeah, we could have. Yeah. Should they? <laughs> well, that's why I'm wondering if we should talk to them and say, hey guys, we've given you a good deal here for three or four years. We need to go up. And they may want to put it out for a bit and see what they get. Right. You know, that's how, the main reason we ever bought that small truck. It was to help do that. And now, of course, it winds up doing 10 things more than it should. Well, that, some of the dead ends. You the know, little East streets in East Fairfield, rather than trying to go through them with the tandem. And, you know, this one down here, Minor Drive. Just yeah. A lot easier to do with those little, the old little ones. But you know, well, that truck is pretty handy all around, right? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, down mm -hmm. where office and all those little yeah. Yeah, bargain rides. And, uh, so I, you're going to ask him if, 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 if it wasn't included in the bid, right. could he consider it? Right, but he wants to still does it. Does it still wants to do it, and we we will have to raise the price to cover the price of fuel. Nothing okay, else. we're we're looking at yeah. It's one thirty. I think cost right. of fuel of <laughs> and, and well and labor, you know, yeah. and the truck. Yeah. So that would be their obligation, right? I mean, that's obviously. So it's right. All right. we do that is a town road, so we'd have to plow the main drag around. Right. And then that's it. Right. And. Uh, I think the reason they ever got us doing it is because they had someone else plowing. They didn't sand it. Somebody broke their arm or leg. Well, I mean, they didn't have it done by school though. Right. They didn't have it done enough. <coughs> That's part of the good reason to have it done by a contractor though. Mm -hmm. Is insurance. Yeah. Somebody falls and gets hurt. Yeah. <coughs> so we've been doing it for at least six years, seven years more. Oh, longer than forever, forever. forever. We've been through two pickups. This is the third truck we've been on, right? It's been yeah. a long time. Yeah. I would say, with no judgment of seeing it, the, the status of this truck or whether we have any interest in a truck, put our name on the list. Yeah, I, I probably. How long did we have this one though? This was a carryover when we bought it. Yeah. It was a year, you know, it was, went into the new model year at that time. Yeah, we call it 16, 17. Yeah. You know, so it's seven years. And we tried, we tried to be on a six or seven year schedule of trading mm -hmm. that truck off before we got after. And it's still running okay, I mean. That yeah, yes, yeah, so it's just, if we're going to the cycle and it, Yeah, and you and know, it could be a year. You guys so. all just gonna get done seeing what that truck does. Yeah. It does a lot for yeah. 550. So I'd say, to tell them, we'd, I would think we'd want to put our name on the list. <coughs> yeah, I think you're obligated anyways to put your name on the list. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they're the only ones interested. I mean, I don't know if new car is interested in anything now. They've gotten a little bigger. And, yeah, I have no idea yeah. about that much. 
Okay, well, what else you got? Mm-hmm. That's all. That's, uh, that's salt. Yeah, another 550. So, guess on less and talk to your car and tell them mm-hmm. uh, 550, see what their take on it and what they, yeah. they're. You're happy with that 550 size, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. we went from that, what, 3500 to that, but you seem to have had a few problems with that vehicle. Right. Yeah. Well, I think just the it's heavy, heavy duty and it's heavier. It's heavier. Yeah. Yeah. You can say it's doing a lot. Oh, yeah. Doing a lot. I mean, the more you got it, the more they, you know, I mean, they were thinking about putting the take in it, but they didn't yeah. find one, but. Yeah. No, I think it makes a good, good fit for what we got for the little roads and all the little, yeah. all the little stuff it does for it. Mm-hmm. You know, tied it around the trailer, better to do it with that than it is with a big tank yeah. or a, yeah. mm-hmm. You know, doing the hay and all that stuff with it. Yeah, so you've been outside sitting in the new truck by the roadside just to No, get to no, I thought about where to wake people. Yeah. You know? Well, you come up here in the afternoons like where James is and you both can wave. Yeah. 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 No, we're just getting the stuff ready and equipment. Getting start getting equipment on for in case Mother Nature comes. You never know. Well, not the next 10 days, anyway. No, that's good. It's good for everybody. The temperature up a little bit. Better than those poor folks in the Midwest. They're what they get. Some get a foot of snow. Yeah. I haven't heard that deal yet. Oh, it's it's in in the, uh, last week sometime there when that cold snap hit us. Like Michigan. Sure. Michigan. <coughs> Wisconsin, part of, I guess even Chicago got some of it. 10 days out there's rain, but it's still pretty warm. 3 degrees, 60, 61. Yeah. Pots, oh, warm. Oh, well, good enough. Well, that's all I got. Well, thank, thank, thank you, Mom. Thank you. Mom. So thank you. I did want to mention that the munis- municipal roads general permit, um, uh, there are updates in the works that is the the um, permit that we use to update our road segments that are hydro hydrologically connected and um, we as a result have had to i've had to download apps and attend training and learn how to upload pictures and pre-survey inventory um, information is going to be submitted by us instead of the regional planning commission so that's relevant because last year um, Mo and I did some walking around on Jouer Road with Regional Planning Commission. This year, if we want them to do that, we'd have to contract with them. The money isn't going directly to them um, to do that. So that's relevant. I just wanted to mention that for roads. So now, theoretically, you and Mo walk around, take pictures, submit a form, and yeah. submit it to... It's all uploaded on an app. So we, I, I did the post pictures that way. So I've done it. I, I just learned how to do it so that we can, I, I think that I'm going to be able to upload everything and change our, uh, the status of the segments myself, um, fine, but next year we're also going to have to do it, do the walk around scoping. Bethany, you know that one? Well, unless we want to pay her to do it, because the, the, I the, think it's good money spent. I do too. <laughs> no. Honestly, Bethany, she really knows what she's doing. But well, she knows the grants. Yeah, that too. And she okay to grants. So. Yeah. I've got my personal opinion. Well, I'll give you that. Yeah. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Linda. Well, this little thing I gave you, so I get a lot of junk that I just, Oh, hit, hit, delete, 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 you know, because there's a lot of junk. Well, this one, I deleted a couple times, and then the guy called me. He goes, did you get my email? Oh, I don't know. And who is this guy? Um, it's whoever he is. <laughs> anyway, so I said I'd bring it to you, so, you know. I'd, I'd like to table this to the next meeting so I can read it and research. Well, it. no, I'm just yeah. Yeah, I'm no, just, I mean it, yeah. it's, it looks good. I just would like to read. I don't want to. I don't want to sign yeah, exactly. a policy thing. Just are we in, just are we anywhere in violation of this? Is it no, it's right just now? it's just a guy. So include we, ourselves in something we don't need to be. So somebody can use it. As excuse come back on. Exactly. He's just like, you know, can you bring it? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> Well, we went through like the whole policy review because yeah. we have our own policies, right? Yeah, that, and you have that to... would be it wouldn't be in conflict with any of. The... Yeah, I haven't looked at it at all. Yeah, so. Yeah, so it's just 
So, you know. My personal opinion is don't get involved in anything we don't need to as long as we're not out of <coughs> compliance with right. anything. Part of this is just the, what, some of the ones mm. that we just did. This that, may, that. yeah, this That's what I was thinking, the same thing. This looks really right, for the community yeah. side, that was part of the... Yeah. <laughs> Let me look and see how we've written. We, I'm pretty sure we have something written all over there. Yeah. Well and this is, he's just trying to get pounds and put them on a list, and I'm like, yeah. okay, whatever. Yeah. You know, I don't well, get maybe it. We send the, I mean, maybe we send them the policies that we already have on record. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just saying this one is pretty similar to the one that we did get done for the community center. Yeah. yeah. Basically, yeah. it maybe we uh, reworded a little different, but it's the same thing. We just had to the proof. Yeah. And all I do is I did. He asked me to do so. I can say I did it. So that the next time he calls, I did it. So I'll compare this to so, the, the, um, the policy that we have on. Then I just have okay. a question for Melissa. Did that? No, I'm good. Thank you. Melissa, um, on, a, on our minutes there with that West End Pizza thing, did you ever hear or any? They're thing? coming on uh, <coughs> the next meeting. Okay, just so we too easy to follow through the tracks if you get yeah, stuff. They're, if they're on the agenda for the November meeting, they okay. come in. Um, so Thank tax you. sale of the property <coughs> in East Fairfield is December 21st at 10 a.m for that building. Um, Pat Winnegar was in here today because he, to pay to something, drop off ballots or something, and noticed and he goes, um, he said he thinks that building is pretty chuck full of Tom's stuff when Tom had it. Well, he didn't have to clean it out or? Yeah, he thinks it's pretty chuck full of <coughs> stuff. Treasures that Tom accumulated <laughs> yeah. over the years. So we can only imagine. Um, anyway, um, that's what it's on the schedule for. Did we ever hear anything back from the state? They're, they're not, they're not going to pursue anything. They're going to let the tax sale go through. They're not interested. They want, they want that resolved first. So now the trouble is, because they're not the town with to buy this out of tax sale. Well, we didn't have to take a building. <laughs> Eventually, you have to clean it out or get after his estate to get you. Well, get out. John, John Soul called. He basically thinks the town owes him money <coughs> because he paid too many taxes on it over the years. Yeah, yeah, John. Sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's where he stands. I won't be at the next meeting, so if you're going to start budgeting, um, just. I doubt we're going to get that. Uh, yeah, small. I doubt. No, we're just going to have to start. Yeah. But that stuff. No. we're really Actually. starting at a clean slate with the reappraisal, and they're putting together some numbers of what it would cost them if we can have it on the in the warning to go from listers to an outside assessor. I think essentially, especially the first year or two, it's going to be a wash because they're going to have to be training. If you find somebody to do the job, they're going to have to be working with them. And so you're going to be paying the trainee plus them to do the training. I think, you know, starting with a clean slate, starting with them, they're professional, they can go out, do it, have everything in the computer uh, very cost effectively. Um, Were they putting some numbers together? They are putting some numbers together. Do they together. have other towns in the area that they do it for? They do have other towns they do it for. Of similar size or nature? Well, no, it, what, they go by the building permits. You yeah. know, it's because what they would be doing is taking care of the new builds, the building permits, going out doing the new inspections and sketching in the new builds. Essentially, I do the rest of the work. The current use, the um, uh, transfers, um, everything that has to be done with the state, I do. It's just the new builds and sketching those in. And you know, not having um, anybody seem to come forward. Right. And this is not, this is, a, this is um, an occupation. This is, this is not something. This is where your town makes the money. If your grand list, if your property isn't valued correctly, you're not raising the money. You back to the reappraisal. What's that? You got to go do what we're doing right now. Yes. So theoretically, 
if you get these them in and they're on top of it, because you can't tell me that this could have been avoided at some level if people had been more on top of that piece. Right, but you've done reappraisals every so often outside anyway. Yeah. I forget when the last one was done, but. Yeah, but I think, you know, to keep it, I think it's gonna be more cost effective going forward is to have them do the service then try to figure out somebody that says, oh yes, I'm gonna do it, and doesn't follow through, and then you're stuck. Do we have to, a town meeting, have a vote on not having listers? You have to have a town, you have to go, sh shall we go to- um, Outside appraisers. Outside appraisers, uh, appointed appraisers, instead, you know, and then if that passes, if that doesn't pass, then you have to do the lister thing. But I had talked to um, our district advisor, and I said, well, how would that work if I still do that? Well, you hire the outside appraisers, the asses, you know, to do the assessor to do, the outside assessor to do that piece, and then you appoint me to do, to be the assistant, you know. So it still would work the same way. And how much would that cost? What I would get, yes. what I get now for being a lister. But they have any rough numbers, anything just so and start thinking about it? Um, or are they trying to put them, they must have numbers for other towns. Well, they, looking, they came up with, they were throwing around 10. 10,000? Yeah, which is not bad. Oh, I don't think it's unrealistic, no. no. It I mean, has. look at what our budget used to be. The Lister budget used to be, and then you keep backing out, backing out, because the work wasn't getting done. But just because the hours they get put in, the hours they get put in, the work didn't get done. Yeah. You know, there was work to be done. Um, have you thought about, I mean, we've talked about this before. Have you got language that you would think, I mean, as we get ready to this budget, so I have the language. language. Jim Barlow has already given me the language for the step oh, to put the, that on. Why don't you share with this next meeting? We'll, uh, I'm not here next meeting. Well, I mean, just on paper. Just <laughs> okay. Give, give us the, is that, I mean, it sounds like pretty good consensus that you know we got to do something. I mean, you. you We're not the only. Well, we, what, well there is. The, well, there are no listers right now in um, Sheldon. Yeah. They have nobody, so it is. Um, well, they want to go on pass. Huh? They want to go Well, on. no, that's a whole other issue. They, it, when that came up before, it was even an option because of the, uh, they weren't even, up, we're not even on the same system as them at that point. But, um, you know, they have the same option of hiring out um, network as well. I know well. Fairfax, Pat McNall, kind of the same in-house person. She was a listener, and then they had her come in on the work company. They have so. outside appraisers do the other one. Then that yeah. for quite a while. Then, yeah. Well, and Pat is no spring chicken. No, she's. But she. She works a day or two a weekend, I think. Right, but she has help doing the other stuff. Oh yeah, they yeah. have outside appraisers, yeah. I believe. And she does like what I do. Yeah. But it just it's. It's too much to expect of people these days, and well, it's you know. Different than it used to be for poll tax and yeah. go get supper at uh, your grandparents' place. I mean, Neil Mann did it for a lot of years. Yeah. <laughs> Plan the route so you have supper with your grandmother. It's yeah. quite good. Yeah. But no, it just you know you, people are gung ho. They come in for two minutes and then you don't see them again. And we can't. I I wear too many hats as it is to keep worrying about this piece. Yeah. You know, I'm good at what, with what I'm doing, my responsibilities of that part of the job are, but, you know, I think that leaving to a third party who goes out, measures, puts it in, and it keeps somebody from saying, you know, saying, well, you know, it's not a personal, that's their job. I agree. That's their job. They can't, you know, so. So they would get a number together, some ballpark number, so we yeah. know what we're yeah. realistically telling yes. people. Yes, exactly. But it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's important. It's where your money comes from is your property. And they're finding, they're finding some fun stuff out there. Yeah, oh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of Yeah, there's new, some, new oh, buildings. 
Well, they, they look at Vermont parcel view. So they went to one place and said, oh, there's, what is this building out here? Oh, it's, it's nothing. It was a log cabin, full blown. <laughs> so, you know, and so it'll be uh, something, so yeah. Um, so next week, I don't know who's gonna, or in three weeks, your next meeting, I don't know who's making your dessert, but. You could make it and put it in this freezer. Oh, is that Banking it? Banking ahead, that's why I was on management. Oh, yeah. Um, Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Linda. Okay. Um, let's see. AP, you may have noticed that we got our final um, uh, invoice on our contract from Reggiano for the Jouer Road. And it was for the, the last three pieces, which was... Um, the final design bidding, contract plans, construction bidding, award, and consulting services during the construction. And um, I heard from Tyler, <laughs> and he wanted to know, he emailed me, and he said he wanted to ask about a change order for the work done to help with the construction oversight bidding and, con and the contract development. So at that time, when we were um, looking at Stantec and we were build, bidding out for the, for the construction management, we <clears throat> I had him look at a con, uh, like the contract and see, to see if it was something that was similar to what they do. And then I had um, legal counsel look at it. And I think that he's asking, he didn't put that in the invoice, and he's asking if he would be amenable to um, basically adding that as a as an or a change order to their contract so that they can get re reimbursed for that time he said it's very little time but before he gets into the review of the hours and costs he wanted to confirm with the town and the select board that it would be agreeable i think he's lucky we're not suing him for a time delay on the project itself and the lack of him in a timely manner of getting this thing done for given dates he had given us that's my opinion on this. They delayed everything because we're a year behind on the thing because of it. Because they didn't get their act together and get their work done. I would, right. Yeah, I'd say you're lucky we're not suing you. Don't <coughs> get more money. That's my opinion. I don't know how you guys feel. I'm just telling you how I feel. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Okay. I will let you know. And I did. Yeah, that's my. You guys, how do you feel about it? I don't know. They, they jerked us around pretty well for a year and a half. Well, not getting things completed. I think they didn't have it done right. They didn't have it done at the end when they were starting projects. Yeah, that was. I was going to say that some of the things that they did, and I made sure that they they recognized that it was part of their contract to mm -hmm. do to redo. They said that they were going to create um, all of the specs for the project, and they were not the the H and H study needed to be completely redone according to um, FEMA. And I made sure that they recognized that the, the fact that they did it wrong doesn't mean that we have to pay it again. Yeah. That, that that was that was I mean, part of the first contract. Started off, you know, Sam was supposed to do it, and he thought he was. And then, you know, when you called him, he's all well, no, it's not done yet because he was aware of the stuff wasn't getting done. This yeah. other guy. Yeah. And the other thing that happened a, a couple times is their engineer showed up to a walk around of the project once, and then to a meeting with. Um, with FEMA and he didn't have the answers and found places on the maps, all of the, all of the paperwork that he said in the meetings that this was copy and pasted from another project and it shouldn't be in these, these specs. So that in itself made me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> a, a handful of things, no answer. Um, just no, no crap, you know. I, I, I understand and I, I agree with your, your take well, it's on like things. the time he came, he was going to do all the bids by a certain time, didn't get them down. No. There's more. I said they're lucky we're not suing them for breach of contract on stuff. And just missing. I'm them. a little uncomfortable with the approach also saying, hey, would you pay, <coughs> pay something when we don't, I don't even know what that means. I mean, yeah. it's like, before we actually wrong, yeah, wrong, not yeah. wrong. How are you going to pay me before I start billing it to you? Right. I mean, that to me seems like, hey, I had 15 hours into reviewing or 10 
but I'm uncomfortable even, you know, as I said, agreeing to something without even knowing. What Regardless of all, I mean, he he said he doesn't want to dig into it, so that means it's going to be a not going to be a little bill. Yeah. yeah. Well, you could you could say all what Gavin said, and if if he wants to come talk about it, yeah, come see us. I think, I think he'd better be getting the general idea. Of the, the majority of the feelings are. Bud, you're lucky we're not suing you. Sorry, Bud. I hear you. For your lack of, uh, I think that other guy down the line we had to be starting to do a few projects with. The one Randy was recommending, because I've heard three, four others comment how well that guy does in the completion dates. So. We're going to have to talk a little bit about that in January, too, because we have um, the North Road project. We had discussed wanting to hold off until next summer to do the North, the next North Road project. Yeah because of the clip, the, the blasting, and we don't really know what's under the road, and we thought maybe engineering would be in Is that the one by Robbie and Danny's? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll talk about that a little. We said that we were going to bid that out in January, February. Yeah. So we should talk about it. I mean, that's, it's kind of an on-site, because they know it's that color on legs, but they don't know how bad, you know, if you right. set the new set the one on there or not, but yeah. that blasting, I mean. yeah. Ledge is good, but if it's not wide enough to get in, you're gonna have to do something. You know, maybe you can just uh, hammer drill it with a excavator. You know, but don't know. So, um, any other questions on that? No. Not for me. Anyway. Okay. Um, the lot striping update. I think I talked to you a little bit about, yeah. about this before. That when I asked um, Mike Mike at Scotts about if we could change the uh, pond road striping so that it allowed for more of a slant. He said that um, the road was originally and still is striped at, at, in diagonals at the um, amount that was allowed during that time so that we didn't eliminate any, any uh, spaces. So he said that if we went on a more dramatic line that we would be, we need to eliminate some spaces he also said that during that time, the road foreman and Jim Coda, I don't know Jim, which Jim, um, Smith was went it? out to Coda was Jim Smith. Yeah. Jim Smith went out to measure where the road was and marked the, par the parking and changing the angles may be um, may result in some some road access issues. So we want to make sure that we're we're thinking about that. He said that if they were to change that because they would have to remark everything. The price would increase significantly, doubling the, pr the total price, which is 500, it'll be a thousand. Um, and he suggested hiring an engineer in order to make sure that it's right. The biggest thing I've seen <coughs> there is that dummies don't pull up tight to the curve. Do you have, uh, do you have the original engineering? He's the original person, the person who originally uh, striped it with really consult with Mo and and Jim. I yeah. think it was Jim Smith. Um, so Don't that it was. I, would imagine. Yeah. I guess I wasn't a part of this, but I guess originally the the concern was that we didn't want to eliminate any spaces, um, in order to make the slant more you know more distinct, and if we do that, it will eliminate spaces at the beach. I mean, I guess what I would suggest that you do is uh, talk with Randy. I mean, he, he's our you know engineer. He kind of took over. He, he can tell you. I don't think there's any legality. It's, you can do what you want to do. So If it costs a little bit more, you lose a couple spaces, but if you can get the trucks kind of out of the center of the road. That was the biggest thing. Twice I went over. <laughs> I, I recall that when they striped it, they didn't stripe it with Jim Smith. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So they, they, they that's possible. So they, he said that they striped it away from the center. So if you go to the center, there's a there's a cross, um, a place where you're not supposed to park, right right in front of the sign, and they go in one direction in on one side, and then they go in the other direction yeah. on the other side. So it's it's kind of strange to it. <laughs> but. But an idea, no. I mean. Just yeah, but that just, I, I see that paperwork. Is that is that here? I haven't seen anything. All I I've heard this from him. Yeah. So and he's familiar with it because he came, they painted it. 
So I can talk to Randy about looking at those lines and seeing if we Well, do I just, you know, if you know, Ron, he'd be there. And, yeah. I mean, I got his cell phone number. You probably <coughs> I can give you a cell phone number. Yeah. Just, I would also ask Amanda. Because I remember. That was under Grant. Yeah, Amanda, Amanda was involved. Yeah. Amanda came to the meeting and said the lines are wrong and what do we want to do about it? Oh, you right. remember that? Yeah, I remember that. She said the lines are wrong, they painted them wrong, what do we want to do about it? And if we were going to have to pay somebody else or. Where are we going to have to pay to have the white paint taken off? <laughs> yeah. If they, if they remarked it, they had right. to take that out. Pretty much faded out mm -hmm. now. Yeah. But that time we would have had to pay to have had the paint removed. Have them removed. And it was yeah. a big deal. And yeah, and right. You're right. You're right. Remember I that discussion? That. I think it was okay. straight wrong in the first place. It was straight okay. wrong. Okay. okay. See? This is well, I don't know anything about the history. And I don't, I know it would cost money to tape paint lines off. But my gut tells me it's unsafe. That's what my gut tells me. On a, on a busy Saturday afternoon or Friday night, and I don't know if it's like we should have flashing red, yellow. I, it's just yeah. like there's, it's to me, it's like they're trying to put a 10 pound obstacle, you know, they in a five pound it. bag. It, they got a little bit. But it's, there's ten just pounds, too much activity. 10 pounds of crap. And yeah. Five pounds it's, of it's okay. and I, so anything, I think anything we can do to kind of move in a direction of if we lose some spaces, that's probably better than. Yeah. Okay. Do you agree? I mean, you know, oh, I agree. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, maybe the original striping was the way it was supposed to be. Like Ron kind of wants right. it now, you know? Right. But I just had to get an engineer, you know, somebody... Oh, I agree with I agree with what you're saying. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying, I don't know any details. I don't think I'm going to pay for it, but... I've looked everywhere. It was, grant, it was a grant program and all that whole yeah. thing. I remember. Well, all, all the work at the pond was a grant. Yeah, it was a grant thing. I'm I can talk to Amanda. Ask yeah. Amanda. Uh, <laughs> did you want to talk to Randy? And Again, see, yeah. walk, do a walk around yeah. with him and talk about what, what's needed. He's he's always really good about coming back and telling yeah. me what, what happened. I, I park my truck in the lines now, and I park my truck in the where we should be, and that makes a big difference. Yeah. Okay, so I mean the advantage yeah. of having. And if you're gonna repaint it, let's do it right this year. Yeah. Trip, do though. you do you want to talk to him like within the next couple of weeks so that we can yeah. he it? I don't Excuse think me. you're gonna be able to see those lines for much longer. Sorry. Right. What's the winds, winter hits? Okay. The advantage of having trucks stick out is it slows traffic down. Yeah. That's and true. And people drive true. way too fast through there when it's busy. So if there's a truck sticking out, people slow way down. Sometimes we should have a speed bump you can put down and then take it out. And well, fall. there are rubber speed bumps yeah. that you can drill into the. Right, then take them out. Yeah, so in the winter months you can take them out so you wouldn't have to plow them. I mean, because it's not an issue. <laughs> yeah, but we, we went through that and the, uh, all those milk trucks and stuff going up there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of them use that way, not going to Sound Hill. Yeah. yeah. If I may say, I recognize the Jim Coda name from V Trans. I think yeah. it was a different. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I threw Coda in there because I wasn't sure yeah. um, if it was Jim Coda, he would no, be. Jim Smith. Jim Smith. Jim Smith. Yeah, was Jim yeah. Smith. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, would you like a dessert? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, when I eat, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the paving CD matures in November. Do we want to use some of the funds for, for the cost um, overrun this year? We overran that budget by $38,956. Which one was that? It was the paving. Yeah. Uh, the paving budget, we, we went over budget by almost $40,000. So and we had how much in that fund? So right now we have $65,613 in it. I think that's what we agreed upon earlier, right? Yeah. If we overran it, so we need a motion to do that. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to verify. Before. I yeah, can't. I right. can't move money in banks without a motion. Yeah. So yeah. we talked about that a couple weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. Someone make the motion to transfer. Make it. Make it. Tom, make it. Second. So just the amount that we're over budget. Yeah. Right. Is anybody opposed? If not. And this is from the paving CD. Uh yes, it's the it's called the paving fund. It's a CD. Um. I don't know where that, how that money originated, but oh, I think we it was, money into it. we kept putting money, we just, if we didn't use all the money, because we haven't raised that paving budget. Future fund or okay. No, I think it's at 155 in the budget, isn't it? 
We haven't raised that thing in 10 years. No. And, yeah, I mean, trying yeah, to get more roads paved, we're going to have to repave them. Okay. So, <coughs> I'll make that transfer. cost of paving yeah. going up all the time, we may have to raise that up a little yeah. bit. But, you know. You, God, everything else has gone up, so it's, it's scary. Yeah, that was a really big overrun. Uh, it was needed, but yeah. yeah, everything is too expensive. Um, so I would mm -hmm. like to request a motion as well that um, we extend the VCDB, the VCDP contract for administrative services for, um, so the Northwest Regional Planning Commission has been doing administrative services for that grant so that I don't have to. And uh, Green Dolphin has been doing the clerk of the works stuff, which is different. They're doing the, they're monitoring the project and, and making sure that all of the accounts payable is approved. So this is separate from them. What she's doing is she takes all of that and processes all of the all of the online documents and all of the online requirements of the grant, so that I don't do that. Okay. Um, what what grant though are we referring? It's to? the VCDP grant for the pavilion at the community center. Oh. So they're still going, and the NRPC. Um, have they even started building that yet? Saw materials there the other day. So, I think they were looking at it today, but they haven't put that down. Though. I have a few things I wanted to say about um, the pro. I haven't been involved with it. I've been told, <laughs> and I'm told, which is fine. But I do have some concerns with um, some of the delays and problems that that the um, contractor has faced. Is the way the the project has been organized. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk about that publicly or not, but... Um, well, I think that's something you've got to do in uh, executive session. Yeah. So it, it's not something that we have to do right now, but in terms of why is there is a de delay, why, why the delay is Was there, there a multiple? deadline on completion? No, we're okay. Uh, because God, like, <laughs> I'm only at, from, at the um, Northwest Regional Planning Commission is on top of all of it. She does the extensions if we need them. She makes sure that the requisitions are being, I push a button when the requisitions go in and then we get paid. So that's basically my, my role. Um, and it's, it's wonderful, but it's, um, and so I would, I would request that their contract be extended through March 31st, 2023, so that all of the processing at the end of the grant is, is So I thought it was a, for the whole project. They, they had a short period, they don't, didn't cover the whole project. The pro the their the money that was in, that was budgeted is the correct amount of money, but the timeline because they changed the the con the the grant timeline, they never actually we never actually changed their work timeline. So this is a change in the work timeline for so that Northwest Regional Planning can continue. You need a motion for the change in the work time frame. Yeah, it's just well, to it's extend it. Through. Yeah. It's the same. It's the same work. It's just over a different period of time. So they're going to be, they're not doing more work. It's just that it's taking longer. And they're not asking for a change in the budget. Just They're not taking, asking for a change in the budget, just a change in their contract. Well, it's, given that we might revisit this in the exact, we'll, we're going to revisit this with what you said. I'd like to make that motion to change the work and then we can discuss the details. Okay. So the timeline and, and the work of the Northwest Regional Planning Commission has been, that's been fine. That part of it is not the delay. Okay. So the delay is, is other things that we've been seeing. I've been seeing. And now that's covered by the grant, right? It, this all, yeah, this is all 100% covered by a grant. So it's not really, it's more about, I would like to make sure that you are informed of, a, you know, what's happening just so that you know, and then it could dictate future work that we do as a community. So right at this point, Ryan's my motion to extend the the Northwest Regional Planning Commission contract is through March 31st, 2023. I have a second. Second. Is there anybody opposed? No. I don't think. Oh, yeah. I guess it off it goes. Okay. Um, so do we want to do that later, the executive session? Oh, you yeah. said that you everything and do yeah. it at the end, so we yeah. okay. don't have to go in now. Yeah. So I have two, uh, the two contract, two agreements, are agreements, one for Fairfield Fire District 1, um, for their uh, the water meter replacements and generator, they're ready to, to have that check. 
Um, you approved it already, so I just need this signed by, by you. <laughs> and um, the other one is for East Fairfield Fire District 1, and that is for their um, $8,000 for the pre-study uh, for their, their thing. So it's right on the last page. And so you may have noticed that the, the, the checks for these are in the AP already. Yeah. Um, what else? The budget are, to... Are these guys are just starting this or they're all done? No, they're done. Almost. They're, they're just, they're not completely done. They're, they're getting invoices, so they want to start paying their invoices, which is why they need the money now. They started before. And the, con the agreement um, retroactivates this money toward the motion that was made originally uh, for their project. <laughs> Both are meters. Those are, no, uh, one, no, neither are meters. Well, one is meters and, um, what is it, the meters and uh, generator. generator. And one is for um, pre, because pre-engineering yeah. for a cover over the water. So both for East Fairfield. No. no. <laughs> one for Fairfield Center and one for East Fairfield. Fire District 2 is East Fairfield, that's the uh, meters and generator. Fire District And the roof is for East Fairfield, Fire District 1. Um. Meters, you just said both were for East Fairfield and said one is one no. and one is two. Yeah, well, it's fire district one, fire district two. Fire district two is for the center. That's for meters. meters and I know it's confusing because East, East Fairfield Fire Department formed way before this one did. Oh, and this one is there. Mm -hmm. Oh. There's a half down burn 1949 or something up there. There's um, an old hotel and all that kind of stuff up there. Mm -hmm. So there was a retirement staff who a couple weeks ago. I think I've communicated all of the all of that to you. But I just wanted to let you know that it's all cleared up and everything is is in place so that that won't have any repercussions uh, beyond what we just went through. So um, the rate increase for employees went up, <coughs> employers went up, and it will go up again next year as well. So we'll talk about that when we start budgeting, which. I'd like to start doing as soon as possible. Um, so I do have the budget this year to date budget for the general fund. I'd love to just give these to you. Really take time and look at them and think about them. Um, and I'd like to just make a plan at our next meeting. I think last year we did a special retreat or a special day to talk about the, the budget because it takes so much time. Um, <coughs> that again but let's I'd like to just get that on the agenda so that we're moving forward um, so this is just take this and really bring it home and take a look and think about it um, that's your homework sorry okay. um, does that sound okay Thank you just starting up the conversation at our next meeting I thought it would, it would I mean, everyone's got busy schedules and everything, but I thought, I think Gavin said doing budgets late at night isn't always optimum, so, you yeah. know. Yeah. As much as daytime one seems to. Uh, it went pretty, I thought it went pretty, pretty yeah. well. Yeah. To do that. But, I mean, start with and Especially if we have to kind of do our own, yeah. you know, make our marks and stuff mm -hmm. and show up and boom, boom, boom. And, and no, but I mean, you can look at it, but, I mean, when you go through it every day, you go through line by line and, you know, you, you go as you know, what's spent, and you know, the uh, sand's gone up, you know, fuel's gone up. I mean, some of it's right. black and white. It's just a matter of what oh. that bottom line's gonna look like. True. Yeah. True. I mean, yeah, you can read this, and but when you go through it line by line, it's yeah. on, on the day. I, I like to do it in a day and go through the lines, and I mean, you can do it in less than a day. I mean, you start at 10 and you're done by two or three o'clock, and it's yeah. not, Eight nine o'clock at night when you're right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. So we can either set that now, or I was thinking we could just set the plan in motion. Like we could make a plan for what day we're going to meet and how we want to proceed with that at our next meeting. When you were doing this, what were you basing your forward numbers on? I, I didn't base any forward numbers. This is just where we are today. As of today. As of okay. today. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Some idea. With payroll, this payroll, both payrolls is included in this, but the current week's AP is not. So the 
contract with uh, the AR, the ARPA fund uh, things, things that for the grants, those aren't, those aren't included. included. Um, I just don't want to lose track of that because it seems like we, and we do have increases coming up, so I, I can have those numbers at their next meeting. So. Um, so Molly, who's been using this this room for the yoga, has been going really well. Um, we had two um, questions. One is you had asked for a locksmith to come and talk. We were talking about the door here to see if it could be reconfigured so that we can lock people out of the, of the rest of the building. And the locksmith seems to think that we can because it's a fire hazard because we have an exit over it, that exit sign. Uh, that door there. I know. And he said it would be best if we talked to a fire, a fire marshal before we do anything with the lock. Um, and the second part was um, I just wanted to mention that we've been keeping all of the doors locked. So uh, we keep keys for the, for the closet that was unlocked before. Um, the uh, Nemric people are, are all locking up. Everybody, everything that used to be unlocked is now locked. So it's been, idea. Yeah, it's, no, it's been not a problem as of yet. So Molly had asked if she could have a key during the winter months after driver's ed ends. And we had discussed this, we kind of went around um, the new um, this, like room use form says that we can have notes at the bottom of the special conditions. She wants to know if one of those special conditions could be that she gets a copy of a key and returns it after her class. And I said I would bring that to you. Does she donate anything for the use of this, or is she pays twenty five dollars every time she comes to use it? So she's she's been she's been paying um, at the town clerk's office. I I think utilization is good. You know, I mean, well, that's you, what it's built for. Yeah, I mean, it, it, until someone shows they're not worthy of the trust, and it sounds like she's built, you know, a yeah. reputation. And she looks right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. nowhere to find her for sure. Yeah, we could use the dues. I, I just would look, make sure that, like you say, everything is secure. Right. right. The only thing that's not is the downstairs. We haven't locked that that door yet, um, and we haven't locked. Um, we can't lock the kitchen. So nothing. The kitchen is an open room. There's no door on it. I know. So she needs the codes for the alarm system. Uh, if if she does her class outside of the times, but at this point she doesn't. So. No, because Melissa does it. Well, Jeez. do you unlock the code? That do you have to do you have to unlock the code system? <laughs> the alarm system? No, it doesn't set itself until I don't know what time. I think it's like eight or sometime. I later. set it when I leave. Okay. I said it when I leave, but I leave later than her. So I don't leave until 8.30, 8.45. I get in emails, all of the emails, whenever the lock, and whenever the system is unlocked or locked, I get all of the emails, and I get uh, calls <laughs> if the, the alarm goes off, and I've had to walk people through um, how to not do that. Sometimes this has happened with select board members. Um, I'm but curious when she, what, what day is she talking about? She doesn't have a date, she just wanted to find out if she could un, sort of untether from, from your timer. There is no, I mean, there are, there are no breaks. November 8th was the only day that I wasn't going to be here. Okay. And we have an election that day. Okay. So she's going to do it downstairs so right anyways. Right through and the I'll be here. And I'm, then I'm... I start right back up again on November 15th, and I, I mean, she's, she's thinking not Christmas. Christmas. She is, well, not Christmas week, but she's thinking if there's a time when she wants to do a class and you're not here, she's asking whether she, we would be amenable to her having a, key, a copy of the key. And as of right now, she hasn't made any, made any plans for her future classes because we want, she wanted to find out what, what the parameters would be. So you're thinking she, she wants to go more than once a week? 
She might want to go more than once a week, which would be an, an extra $25 a week, which she would be paying. And, or she might want to just do it on a Thursday instead of a Tuesday or something like that. She hasn't given me a schedule. Well, it sounds like it might not be a problem, number one. But right. let's just say, let's hopefully that's the situation. But I mean, it's my opinion that if we can hopefully not have a problem, but if there is a conflict or it doesn't have an overlap, then you know, subject to. Like, for instance, tomorrow night, I don't have class here. My class is in St. Albans. But it's from 4 till 6, so I'll just come up here and let her in. It just means I have to hang around for an hour and No, you don't want to do around. that. You don't want to. You, you I'm not going to. Uh, well, I'll go down and clean my classroom and do homework. I'm not going to leave the building unlocked. Well, that's. But. Yeah, I don't care. I mean, I, I just think we want utilization. That's what we want. We want utilization. So I'll find out when she wants to have her class. If she doesn't know what, if she's not going to change her class away from that time frame, then it's no problem. But if right. but if she does, yeah. then we can talk about it the next week. Yeah, we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. 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 that was more stuff you got. I want to get. Okay. Yeah, I want to get old. <laughs> I know we do. Um, so the Starwind Farms um, update is um, that there have been multiple uh, discussions through email between the Pond um, Association, the Fairfield Pond Association, and, the, and Mr. Horrigan and Starwind Farms. And there was a conversation, I believe, at the Northwest Regional Planning Commission as well. Um, and at this time, uh, I actually asked he, let me see, what's his name? <laughs> Jason Gay. Jason uh, said that he would be willing to come and talk with the select board about his project, about the project, and uh, is available on the 14th. So that was, I said that that would be a fine day for him to do this. So, um, and he did send some more pictures uh, out in response to some of the things that the Pond Association, I think you actually were on this email. The Pond Association um, had requested more pictures. Yeah, I've seen. Okay, so that's my update on that. It's to be continued. Did he agree to put a balloon or something up? Uh, he's taken multiple pictures that show that the wind turbines that they're planning are smaller than the, the ones that perhaps had been originally. Um, he seems to think that had there, the anticipated number and size of wind turbines was was bigger than the actual. So he's trying to show, he has multiple places where he's done some, some photographs that show that the line, that, that the, the top of the wind turbines are barely visible. That's that's basically what he's saying. Well, they're, he they're visible, to, they're visible. Yeah. The, 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 the photographs you just showed are, you know, it's not conclusive. And it doesn't show, doesn't show the impact on the pond. Right. Because, you know, the, the location they selected, I mean, I just reviewed right. the photos. Right. The regional planning asked if he could put a turbine up since these things are kind of portable. He said that, that didn't make sense. Okay. He did not. He did not disagree that a balloon test could be done. Okay. So the balloon test is not. It, it, it's the project review committee at the regional planning is talking about some type of visual presentation. That's why I said a balloon. Is, yeah. I mean, you get it to where the top of the thing. It shows whether it's above the yeah. trees or not. <laughs> it's above the trees. It's it's yeah. It's about know. 50, 56 feet above the trees, and yeah. then it, then it becomes subjective. And it's also, as he said, on the regional planning committee. The clarity of the photograph is very important, and he mm -hmm. said, he said on the in the meeting, he said, I we run into a problem because the clarity of the photographs doesn't really represent. I can't really sh do justice to the imagery, okay. or something to that effect. I said, well, that's helpful because yeah. if you do the math, it's 56 above the tree line, and you know it's yeah. totally subjective and. Yeah. So yeah, the, the pond, the pond you know, like I said, the, the pond feedback that I've got as the president of the association has been, you know, there's two, one person who's neutral, one person who is like, hey, I, you know, I don't, I don't mind it. Fifteen people were like, no, 
Yeah. And I, I shared that with David and Peggy. I shared that with Jason. I shared that with the, I just said, I'm getting a lot of feedback that's coming my way. And, and you know, they've been very transparent. Mm -hmm. They've been, you know, trying, you know, David and Peggy and I had a tough, we had a straight conversation. Yeah, I said, hey, I'm just, I'm just telling you what I'm hearing as the president. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know. So in response, I think that what they're saying is that, um, They'd like to come and speak to present to the select board what, where they are at this point because they haven't done that. Yet. I mean, you said in the email, he says it's rarely visible. If it's 50 feet above the trees, I would say it's pretty visible. I well, it's yeah, so it's it's it is pretty simple math, though. I mean, the, the tree line's at 80 feet, right? The, the, the deciduous tree line is about 80 feet, and it's a 100 foot tower, and then the blade is 38 feet. So, you know, it's like 50, 50 plus feet above the tree line. And his point is the blades are so small from the distances that are seen, you know, it doesn't have much in impact. And, you know, one of the things is, well, it's not like, Petersburg just rejected, rejected a cell tower that was 150 feet because it wasn't in, quote, in keeping the rural character of the, the, of the surroundings. Mm -hmm. And this is talking about six that are, that are rotating. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I, it's in accordance with the regional plan. You know, yeah. that the regional, uh, Northwest Regional Planning has a hundred foot tower. And like some of the people on the call, the regional planning said, so if there was 101 feet, it would be an industrial, but since it's a hundred feet, it's not prop industrial. So. So there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of, um, because there are so much conversation happening and he would like to come to present and discuss yeah. all of Plus, this I would think, with you. I mean, like, the the I mean, they clear cut it, you know, they're going to clear cut a lot. You ain't going to have any trees in front of it because they got to have so much clearance. You know, you look at Georgia, they clear cut he, it all. He's, he's putting them in a metal so there's no trees. Huh? He's putting them in one of his metals so there's no trees yeah, there now. Yeah. Um, and and uh, he's been saying that I think the the property owner was talking about how it would be a part, a way of him being able to continue his agricultural efforts. That's what he said today in our meeting. In our, not a meeting, he stopped by. I don't know why he doesn't go with solar panels. So he stopped by and just mentioned that. And I have, I'm totally neutral, but I just wanted to let you know that the discussion is happening and that. Um, he says like they don't want to go solar because they have a, they, it's a, it's a, uh, Two reasons. One, he can continue to uh, there's use the metal for farming. Oh, yeah. And secondly, Jason has said it's more lucrative with the contract with uh, I mean, Vermont. It's not not uh, Vermont Electric Co. I was gonna say, where's this power wind up? I don't know. It go, I don't know. It goes. We, we've asked that question, but yeah. Well, if if the if he's offered, I mean, I, yeah. that's up to the board. Yeah. Or the, well, it's open. It's an open. Yeah. He, he just said he would like to, he said he wanted to come to this meeting. <laughs> and I said, no, it probably wouldn't be a great idea to come to this meeting because it's going to be too long. We have with the library. And, yeah, yeah. You know, it just yeah. didn't make sense. But the, if he wanted to come to an open meeting, then maybe the next meeting would make sense. Yeah. Um, Julie Wolcott would like to invite the select board to consider holding your meetings at the community center at one, once or twice a year, just so you know. And uh, that would be something for you to consider. I just, I told her I would let you know. <laughs> she said, if that's something that you would like to do, that would be great. She does have updates on all of the, um, all of the work they're doing down there that she thought it might be easier to show you than to, than to, uh, Comments just present again, but she would be do she'd be willing to come in and present too. <laughs> I think you wait till next till after the budget and all that stuff, and then maybe it's it, yeah. winter. Okay. <laughs> maybe they might have the pavilion. Yeah, you can go to the pavilion. Um, that's it, really. Uh, there's there's a couple other things. One is a. Uh, an opinion that we got from our uh, lawyer that it's a it's about um, it's a human resources matter. So I would want to talk about that publicly. And then there was another 
Um, before the meeting, David asked for me to print off some information about um, leave for one of our employees that he wanted you to discuss because this person, her, their anniversary is next week, I believe. And so all of the leave is going to reset, but it would be a conversation again for, for our executive committee. We're going to have just a, some discussion on something, doesn't it? Well, we're going to talk about the community center staff. Yeah, yeah just this. Well, this <laughs> right, just community. take a few minutes. Yeah. Let's say you have about the nothing. Nothing. That did you ever hear, or did you ever call a lawyer about that trail? What his opinion was of it? I didn't. I did. It was three and a half weeks ago, and I didn't bring the information. But I will go look again. No, I'm just we did, did, did. I just wondered if we ever got. Yeah, we. I did contact him. But I, I don't have that. Okay. So are we don't have any more. We're just going into the executive, excuse me, executive session for discussion on real estate, real estate, real estate issue. Real estate and human personnel. No, some yeah, personnel. Personnel. So. Real estate personnel. You want to approve everything else? Maybe? We've approved the minutes. We've approved the warrants. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. I'm also <coughs> sorry. Excuse me. Did you tell um, us <laughs> uh, those two have signed. The gentleman, who, I forget his name now, Tori? Is it Tori? No, the man who came from um, the town. Damien. Jane Damien, thank you. He had an invoice that he handed me at the very beginning of this meeting, which was not included in AP. He hoped that, that we could get it approved for a check for tomorrow for um, True Leaf Landscaping and Stonework for the work that they did. Um, was it Doug? Yeah, on the Doug. Oh, yeah. no, it was and I said that, I, that we had already approved the warrants um, and that most likely it would take place at the next um, accounts payable, but I would bring this to you What's the amount? for special Did consideration. Already, what was the amount? It's $5,169.57. And if you decided to make a motion to pay it, I will just include it in tomorrow's checks. It's uh, the backstop <coughs> up by the... Up by the school, but that's yeah. a little bit over what they said, right? I don't know how much they were. Forty nine seventy five, eighty five, but uh, unless he put the top on that, you know. that I don't. Know. I know they were working on it the other day when I stopped the yeah, library. They were working on it. It says original estimate plus extra fence fixings due to grade change. Oh, I think yeah. The guy told me that that Nick said they were telling him it was flat. Of course, when they started on it, they had to come down with it too. I think that's yeah, probably what I, that's about. I didn't know if they. You know, put the top I on it. Don't I? I don't know, Tom. They've just partially done the day I haven't stopped. No. Does I'll someone? Pay second. <laughs> second. Is there any discussion on it? Everybody. It's out of the rec. You know, it's out of the rec. It's budget. out of their budget. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just was hoping that they would put that top on because yeah. just make it more. You know, nothing says that T ball is always going to use it. I mean, some other you know, stop off and use it eventually, and just save people chasing balls. <laughs> So it would have been in the. I, I just want one thing. How, what, how do you feel about the budget? How do I feel about the budget? Which budget? The, the overall the, was we're at eighty five percent. We're right. Well, we're exactly where we were last year at this time. I did look it up. I didn't have a lot of time to analyze the budget this week, but I did look it up. Don't buy a bunch of salt and sand. We're, we're okay. We're still okay, as far as I can tell. I make a motion that we go into executive session for real estate personnel. Okay. Second. Second it. So I'll second it. Yeah. Okay.